Hello, everyone. Uh, I think we should be good. Let me just check. Hello, everyone. Yep, we're good. Perfect. Uh, so we're going to be continuing some uh, PS4 uh, kernel exploitation today with Team Star. So uh, where we left off at the end of the last stream was my hook uh, payload being kind of broken and janky. Um, I did fix that up thanks to a tip actually from uh, Little Lalo from the iOS scene. He tweeted at the uh, the stream notification and, and pointed out the bug. It was really stupid. It was just a bad pointer arithmetic, basically. I, f I forgot to account for uh, one variable, and because of that, I was smashing op codes and writing bullshit instructions in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks to him that that got fixed. I, I don't know how long it would have taken me to catch it otherwise. Um, getting lots of haze in chat. Very friendly today. Um, yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, what we were trying to do was trying to do the reclaim attack with forcing pages from the mbuff zones to be reclaimed by the general allocator uh, by applying memory pressure. And the way we were going to try to de debug that and, and whatnot was through hooks. Now, I when I was digging around a little bit yesterday to figure out what hooks we might want to do for today's stream, I think I figured out why this strategy will probably not work on the PS4, which is unfortunate. Um, but we do want to explore it a little bit because uh, one thing you said to me in DMs, Team Star, that like I, I really vibe with, and uh, I think it's underrated, is the the negative information aspect of how like people seem to neglect how important that information is, even if it doesn't work out. So I th I still want to like look into it a little bit, see if we can make it work. Um, but I think what happens is PS4. Sony actually modified the virtual memory subsystem in a really annoying way. So I'll go through that quickly uh, before we go into testing stuff. So on FreeBSD, this is FreeBSD 9 uh, that you guys are seeing. Uh, what zoom level am I at? So I can go back. Okay. So you can see this, uh, this page daemon wake up function right here. So it's a void type. It takes no arguments, and what this function essentially does is it triggers that garbage collection of pages. So when the system boots up, it'll start up this page daemon, it'll run the routine, and then it'll sleep. And when a allocation is attempted, and it can't get a free page for that allocation, it'll wake up the page daemon to say, hey, I need some pages, try to see if you can free anything up for me. So that's what this page daemon wake up function is responsible for. Now, on normal FreeBSD, this is a very simple function. It's just a void function. It'll go through the wake-up routine. Um, what's interesting, though, is when you get to PS4, you can see here it takes an argument. It moves uh, signed extended uh, EDI into REX, and then it uses that to index into an array uh, for the VM pages needed. On regular FreeBSD, this is just a simple integer. On PS4, this is an integer array. Um, now, following where this uh, value or the value that gets passed in here is initialized is complicated because it's a custom field that Sony added to the VM object uh, structure. So it would require a lot of reverse engineering of the system to try to figure out exactly where that comes from. Um, I spent like an hour or two digging into it, following it up the stack, but I couldn't, I couldn't follow it all the way. Um, it seems, though, it's initialized as an 8-byte uh, identifier. So... What I'm thinking it might be is a core ID, uh, which if that's the case, it means that pages are uh, kept in buckets on a per core basis, which would basically uh, screw this exploit strategy. Thank you for oh, the one that so you didn't ac actually verify that. I uh, didn't verify which, sorry. Uh, oh, the, the per but core thing? The, the yeah, the argument thing. Can we just like simply hook the function and see what the arguments are? So if it's really the core and it's going to be between zero and seven, right? Yeah, the problem is that function isn't going to be called normally, right? Because it, it's, um, well, I don't think it would be. I mean, we could try applying memory pressure to see if we can make it get called, but, um, oh, I see. Yeah, like it's only but called in extreme that, circumstances. That I see. Uh, so is that like 
necessary to get the UMA reclaim thing to get called? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. Last stream, I thought the UMA reclaim itself was the garbage collection. Uh, I was a little bit wrong on that, though. The page daemon, um, or sorry, there is something else that happens. So let me bring that up so I can uh, talk through it a little bit. You want me to reclaim? The zoom is like crazy, but whatever. It's fine. I'll, uh, I'll adjust it down. Okay, so where is this called again? It's called in, is this the one I want, I think? Page out? Yeah. So this is the page daemon uh, routine that, that runs the VM page out scan. Um, so two things happen that are important. It calls the UMA reclaim function, um, but you also have to invoke the uh, VM low mem event because there's hooks that are registered on that event for each type of subsystem. So like mbuffs, they have their own hook uh, that gets called when you invoke this event handler. And uh, so it's important that you also invoke this event handler as well as call UMA reclaim. Um, because everywhere that that's called, both of them are called together. Like I think the other place was UMA core. Um, or actually, no, that's where it's defined, sorry. Uh, must have been VM kern. Yeah, so even here where it's not using the page daemon, daemon explicitly, um, it's invoking that event handler and then calling reclaim. So we, we've got to do both of those things, uh, essentially, which is why we might not have been able to trigger your exploit last time, even though we were forcefully oh, I see. triggering it. Yeah. I see. Um, sorry, I, I was kind of going through uh, a bit of overview there, so I, I will go back through chat a little bit. Uh, did you guys hear the, the recent paper that claims the RSA is done for? I've, I've seen the like synopsis or whatever of it. Um, I haven't actually read it, though, and I don't know how uh valid those claims are they are very bold claims claiming that like rsa is broken and i've seen some people are skeptical about it so yeah i'm not sure do, you, do you have a link for that uh ooh, let's see if i can like, find I it didn't, was not aware of that but i did like a lot of crypto during my uh university time it's it's frustrating because i like just had it up oh wait okay i think i found it I had like at least eight classes or courses, whatever you call it, explaining how AES works. Oh man, that's that's wild. Crypto is like probably my weakest uh, field and like kind of stuff we do. Um, I have sent you the link on Discord and I pulled it up on the stream as well. I see you. Um, honestly, there's too much crypto jargon here for me to even fully understand what they're talking about. Um, Oh shit, that looks complicated, but <laughs> maybe interesting to read. Another thing from chat was flat saying it could be a budget ID. Um yeah, it's possible it's an ID that's different than cores. Um I couldn't like hard confirm it because I couldn't find where it was initialized. Because it gets passed around a lot. So it's initialized in the VM object from VM map entries, and then the VM map entries are initialized from the VM map, like the parent VM map, um, which I'm not familiar enough with the VM subsystem to know where that gets initialized. Because um, I think each process can get its own VM map, right? So what I'm assuming is a process, because they get pinned to cores on the PS4, um, probably when it gets assigned a mapping, it gets a mapping exclusive to that uh, uh, core ID. Pure guess, though. I don't know. Uh, Schnorr is a well-known guy in the field. Pepe Kobe ninety five. Yeah, Thank I you was... for the, the uh, three months though. I was actually surprised because uh, Schnorr uh, is, in fact, well known. Definitely heard about algorithms from him. So he carries a bit of weight, but the math in the paper is pretty much beyond me. Yeah, I think the the math in this paper is beyond most people. Um, there's probably like a handful of people in in the world that can understand what the hell this is even saying. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I I can't really, uh, I I can't really say one way or the other. Um, if it does work out and this completely breaks RSA, which would be insane, like that would be devastating for a lot of industries. But it could be cool for PS4, I guess. <laughs> 
because uh, RSA is the it, basis it for PS4 cool crypto for a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, could be cool for a lot of stuff, but it also could be uh, <laughs> devastating for other stuff. Uh, Proxima understands it, and there were uh, yeah, I mean they're they're really smart guys, so I I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, there were definitely he's he's like the moth guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the one who did all the crypto stuff from the Nintendo uh, stuff, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this paper. I mean, what what kind of sucks about this is it would be nice to cover this on our podcast, our weekly podcast, but I honestly don't think we could do it any justice. Um, I, I like I don't know what we'd be able to say about this paper. Uh, there's no way <laughs> you could give me a year probably I, I to read can... this paper, and I wouldn't understand it. So I can. Oh, it's not that that much. It's like five pages, isn't it? Well, it won't Just take me a year to read stream. it, but it'd take me a year to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I can take a look and then share my thoughts if I make it through the pages. Yeah, I mean, that could, that could be a fun, like, uh, little stream we could do, maybe, is, like, trying to go through the paper, but I, I feel like I'd be... Oh, useless. Shit. That will be... That will take hours. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I don't think... I don't th I don't think it makes sense to do that unprepared. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, back to the the virtu <laughs> uh, virtual memory stuff. I think what I'm what we're gonna try to uh, force or to try to see if this is viable and uh, if I'm wrong about this not being on a per core basis, um, we can try. Uh, so, I, what what was the exact strategy I I put in chat yesterday? Um, Right, so I remember, so I'm pretty sure the browser runs on cores 6 and 7 on the system, um, but the networking stuff, I think it's on core 1, because core 0 is game exclusive, uh, core 0 is used for game loops. I think core 1 is used for the networking shit, so if we try to force uh, GC on with an ID of 1, maybe that will result in the page getting migrated to another core. Um, I don't think that'll happen but it's something we could try at least so basically try the code you already had but force the gc on core one where is the uma reclaim do we have that oh yeah i think i have that yeah so um i think i have the function for waking up the page daemon on 5.0 uh, yeah i do actually i have it labeled right here i thought it was on 1.76 so I will send you the uh, address for that as well. Actually, I have UMI Reclaim open and might be wrong, but it doesn't look like it takes an argument. Oh, it wasn't the UMI Reclaim, it was the page wake up. Oh, Yeah, that's the one that takes the argument. Okay, that does look like it takes an argument. Yeah. Um... And it indexes into this array, which is... How big is this? Why does it do... It's only two. Um, why does it multiply it with four, though? Uh, so it takes... Yeah, I'm not sure on that either. Uh, well, actually, no. Be it, because if it's an index, uh, each entry is going to be an integer, right? It's going to be four bytes wide. So, um, it's it's an array access, right? They're just they're it's an array of integers. I'm pretty sure, because in the kernel source, yeah, but it's 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 not gonna be an array of pointers. Oh wait, what does what does it look like in a kernel source again? Uh, so it's VM pages needed. That's the uh, integer in kernel. Uh, oh sure. right, line seventy five. Yeah, it's an int here. So I think what they did is they took just a single int and they made it into an array of ints. <laughs> Um, what's interesting though is if I go into Ida here, uh, there's only two. Oh wait, that's DQ though. So there would be. Uh... I'm looking for references. Uh... Yeah, so there's four entries in this array, which is a bit weird because if it were cores, you would think there would be eight. Um. So maybe it's not cores, or I'm not sure what it what exactly the identifier would be. 
Um, I need to change the Ida background color to black. I did have that on Ida before, but when I reinstalled, I, I didn't get that all done, fortunately. So has to be a little bit blinding on the stream, unfortunately. Uh, did you take a look at the POC of Slears Govies post yesterday? What did you think about it? Um, I glanced over it. I did not actually read it and uh, see exactly what he was doing. Uh, we might do that in this stream. We'll see. Um, kind of want to finish off with the reclaiming stuff first, though. Yeah, put the put the nail in the coffin on that, I guess. Um, do you have the link to the Watson? Uh, I do. Source code. Uh, what did you want? Did you want the page name and wake up routine? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, one thing I will also mention while you're opening that is I did put the hook payload um, inside of the directory in VS Code, so we can share and, and you can edit that if you want to. Um, oh yeah, can you send me an invite? Uh, yep, I can do that now. There we go. Um. Yeah, I mean, fair warning, some of the code here is, is really garbage. Um, <laughs> the install hook routine in particular is just like... <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not the most robust, we'll say. Um, it does work better than uh, some other hooking stuff that's been done before, though. Um, you can hook anywhere. You can hook, like, non-calls and stuff. Uh, the, the biggest restriction, though, with this payload is we cannot hook anything where the trampoline would include a jump or a call. Uh, anything that has like an RIP relative uh, instruction, it, it's kind of out with the trampoline because I don't fix it up and that would be uh, a lot of work. Maybe something will leave to a future thing. Sleer's about the IPv6 packet. Had to send an IPv6 packet of exactly 65,535 bytes so that FFs get overwritten by FFs. I don't know what that what that means. <laughs> I don't know how to parse that statement. You might have to re-clarify there. Uh, these sorts of streams are something we want to do more of in general, but not immediately after this. Yeah, so this is just for PS4 stuff at the moment. Um, hopefully months down the line, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to put a definitive time on it, but we do want to try to do some more of the... Uh, Break down streams, going through exploits and stuff. Check his code and you'll see it's genius. Okay, well we'll check in his code in a little bit. So let me just take a look at the hooks I have here. So I do have a uh, call GC hook defined already to uh, invoke that page name and wake up function, um, and I also have a hook on the m free m uh, that way it'll print the chain, the pointer that's getting freed, and it'll also crawl the linked list uh, if there's any next pointers as well and follow them. So, um, <coughs> Although that m3m function is called a lot, so not entirely certain how useful that hook will be, but uh, we'll see. All right, I was busy trying to figure out, figure out how to get Visual Studio Code uh, running, so I kind of missed a bit. Okay, no worries. I was mostly just uh, talking to chat, to be honest. Um, oh, I see. Did you add the printf hook yet? Do you mean for uh, blocking in printf? If so, no. Um, I do still have some... Yeah, no, I, I didn't add the locking hook. I, I didn't want to go through all that at the moment. I am surprised that Mira doesn't have that hook, though. That should be added to Mira if it's not in there already. Maybe it is. I am on an older version. But... So I think we'll maybe start off with uh, running this hook payload and then running your uh, POC. Uh, let me just check that I have everything in order for this. To see whether the actual thing got Gets oh, uh, one thing which is interesting to know is whether we manage to free uh, everything from the zone. So 
let's see, what was your hook again? You have like some M free stuff. M free M it'll it'll part. print it, yeah. Um thank you, RetroGamer74, for the uh raid. 83 champions coming in. Welcome in. We're doing some PS4 stuff. Uh again. Trying to trying to hook debug uh if uh, we have a viable strategy with the uh, page reclaiming. What were you guys up to over there? Oh, Kiwi saying the print hook wouldn't survive, suspend, and resume due to printing during interrupt context. Oh, shit, that makes sense. Okay. Um, Sorry, so yeah, you were talking about the M3M print hook? Yeah, I'm looking... We need to print the content of the M buff like the first four byte of the user data to see whether we successfully free um, our target thing. So you're saying add into the hook like a... Um, uh, let's see. Free data. Uh, hmm. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. Because we'd have to do it on the basically the and on the or the sibling pointers too. Okay. But, uh, basically, we have the structure for the M buff, right? Kind of. Um, I don't have the full thing. Um, I think we do somewhere. Oh, we, we we have it in uh, Notepad, I think maybe, or maybe that got erased. Yeah, where where's? Did it get erased? Or was it in strat? Yeah, it was in strat underscore strat dot text. Um, yeah. So basically, we just want to print m data buff and then four bytes from there. That should give us uh, like the packets, the correct ones, right? Uh, it gets tricky when you're talking about uh, in the hook, though, because where that data buff is is going to change depending on the flags that are set because of all these stupid unions. So that does get a little bit annoying to make that run on the uh, Well, if we send a UDP packet, then we should be like on the user data case, like on, on this case, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we just take the o mbuff, add the offset to this one, and then print four bytes. I think that's all we need. Yep. Uh, we just need to get exactly what the offset is for this um, inside of the <laughs> UDP packet mbuff. Because um, I think it would it I, I think it would have a packet header set. I'm not sure if it have extended header set though. Oh, these ones we don't need to look at because that's a union. Right, but it's going to affect the offset of the data buff. No, it's not. If it if it uses this one, it will, right? Mm, that's not how it works, though. It's always a fixed size. We only need to know the size of the M header, which I think we have somewhere. Because if not, you we said mlen is defined to something so that the whole thing is 256 bytes, right? Yeah. Um, and what's the the other thing then? The other thing, sorry. <clears throat> oh, that's the header. That's the header, yeah. Um, and then the the third structure is the extended header, if that's used. Um, and that's the thing. If that's not so used, then that will also be a data buffer. Although that'll what's be the, the MH full size buffer. of the M buff. 256 bytes. The full size is 2... Um, and what is mlen? Um, it's the header length, or 256 minus the header length, I think. Um, What's the header length, though? Uh, I don't know the exact header length. I just know in the source code it takes a size of uh, length 56. Yeah, it's m size minus size of struct m header. Um, I thought I had the size for m header, but I, maybe I lost it. I don't know. Um, that's going to be zero, zero, that's going to be zero, eight. 
that's going to be 0, uh, 10, 0, 18, 18. and then that's going to be 1C. Uh, this will be, is that right? Let me just double check. 18, 9, A, B, yeah. And then C will go to D, E, F, so this will go to 20, and this will be 22. Um, and are you sure what is this? M header pet? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, it'll be six, I think, because LP64 will be defined. So, all in all, so that's oh, it's... should be hex 28 in size, I believe. So, yeah, all we need to do is like the M buff plus hex 28 and then four bytes. Um, Retro Gamer was saying they were trying to uh, look at the Slears Gobi POC and try it in FreeBSD 9, uh, and testing it is not very accurate. Like, it's not reliable in terms of how, how often it'll succeed. That's interesting because I, I believe the way that Slears Gobi POC works is it, from a glance, it looked like it was a heap overflow. They were trying to get like a, a missile line on the header and uh, trigger a heap overflow, which if you do the heap grooming properly, I think you would be able to get somewhat good reliability there, especially in like an MBuff zone where it shouldn't be used too much, where the noise is like, I don't think the noise would be super bad on it, but I guess it would depend on like when it's ran and whatnot and what's going on. It fails a lot with many kernel panics and leak fails. Ah, uh, okay. Well, hopefully uh, we can implement uh, a similar strategy maybe if the reclaim strategy we have doesn't work out and, and maybe it'll be better success rate, but we'll see. So yeah, in the hooking uh, file, 256-8, um, oh, you're writing the uh, the hook statement in there? Yeah. Okay. What's the Oh, do you have the struct mbuff defined? Um I do. It's a really like hacky definition though on line one ninety one. Uh Okay, yeah, I see. Don't think I can work with that. Uh we could just add like a another char array, like header Not... and then That's... That's fine. Yeah. Golem216, thank you for the sub. Welcome in. Uh, how do you plan to use the new flow info and uh, Slurs Gobi? Uh, we will probably look at the new flow info. Yeah. Later on, though, probably. So... Oh wait, MH next is part of that header actually, so it should be hex twenty. Yeah, there we go. Wait, what? Um, this. Why is it hex twenty? Uh, because. Oh, oh, you, you. Yeah, I pulled a member oh, out the from the structure already, for going through the linked list. So, um, I gotta subtract eight from I the mean, pattern I, buffer. I uh, mean, we 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 can just just do that. Yeah. So that should work. Um, I think your code looks good too. Oh, you, the way you do reads is really strange. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, I would just do something like uh, UN64T uh, mbuff pointer. Um, Wait, I don't want a UN64T, I want a UN32T. Oh, okay. Like that then. Um, might need a address of operator there, but yeah, I'd just do it like that. But there's, I think your way should work too. Just... Yeah, I did. I I didn't. Oh, it's not in data though. And the I am made with not having the additional field in mind. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right. Um. So yeah, we'll install that hook. I think that hook's good. Uh, call GC. 
So this should be doing it on CPU core one, if my theory is correct. So yeah. Wait, we know we know that thing is uh for we know there's four entries. Yeah, we can do entries, that. We can clear right? all of them. Yeah. I was just going to try CPU core one to verify that core one was used for the networking stuff, but yeah, we can clear all of them to start with and then narrow it down. Yeah, exactly. Um, main. So let me just check the hooks are installed properly. Two thirty nine three eighty. This is for the Force GC. That's correct. Uh, C eight two eight zero. Let me just verify that one. Uh, make sure I didn't change that. M three M. Yep, we're good. Perfect. Um. Okay, looks good. So. Let me switch over to the PS4 on my monitor and we'll get started on testing that. I think I'm completely on jailbroken, so I'm going to have to run Mira. Yeah. What? Did WSL die? Uh. I don't know what's going on. I've never had this happen. <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. I don't know what happened with WSL here. But we'll get our little setup. Uh, back and running. Uh, where was the other one? It was at Mount D. Mira. Let's just go there. Mira CPP. I've never had that happen with WSL Windows before. That's just really strange. All right. Uh, make clean. Oh, what? Oh, that's right. OK, I do have to fix one thing with the build. Um, I think I'm missing an environment variable, so I will do that really quick. Subtitles in Spanish, please. <laughs> that would be wild. But uh, we don't have that technology yet. Uh, the window sound of death. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is now I got to remember where I put the payload SDK. I'm pretty sure I put it in here. Yeah. Uh, File where oh, okay it was PS4 SDK. Why is it saying it still can't find it? There we go. Had it slightly wrong. All right, so we'll make clean and make, and then we will. Um, do I have it in history? No, I don't. Superhero 1, raiding with a party of 12. Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for the raid. What were you guys up to before coming in here to our uh, little PS4 kernel exploit stream? All right, so we want to cat uh, ps 4 khopbin into... 90, 20. All right, so let's install that hook. Okay, hook should be installed um, in about. Okay, it didn't crash. That's good. So uh, I did uh, invoke a test in the hook payload to also wake up the page daemon and uh, trigger the free. Um, and then there's our mbuff chain. 
Um, so it is worth noting the way you wrote in your data print, it will only print on the sibling M buffs. It won't do it on the, the head M buff. So we might oh. want to fix that. So yeah, fuck that one up. Yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah, it was an easy thing to miss. Uh, what is the thing you running at the right VS code? Uh, it's a little script I have that just it reads COM three to get uh, serial read over serial for the PS four output. This is basically like STD out kind of for the PS four kernel. We're seeing right now. May have fixed it. Okay, let's see. Um... Stir data. Yeah, that should be good. Perfect. So we will rerun that and reinstall it. Uh, one thing that we might have to. Oh, there's an error. Uh, mbuff pointer undeclared. Uh, aim pointer. There we go. All right. Yeah. Oops. Okay, good. Um, so we will see. Sometimes yeah. when reinstalling hooks, uh, shit blows up. So if it does, we'll just have to restart. Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll we'll restart. Uh, I think I still have the beep counter going. So, oh no, it it's not still going. But that's fine because we can uh, set it back up. We were at one oh six, so we'll keep it going. You know what's a somewhat tedious but also relaxing task? What's that? Looking at the disassembler and then naming all the functions. <laughs> that reminds me of back when I did a when I dabbled a little bit in modding in the PS3 days. Um and we'd have to move offsets up to like when a new game version was released. So like, I think it was, like, Black Ops 3, like, we 1.13 came out, so I gotta do, you know, that analysis to try to do some binary searches to find where functions move to. It was it was an oddly, like, calming task, yeah. Because you could just throw on music or something and do it mindlessly, unlike what we're doing right now. Dear Spectre, drink some water. Don't worry, I've got water with me. No worries on that point. Also, since I've been doing this for a little bit, uh, my throat doesn't get destroyed at, at all anymore, basically. It, it's gotten used to the punishment. Wait, what? What's up? <clears throat> what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> when we used to do straight... I know how you could interpret that. Okay, I get it. Um... <laughs> I was, like, spaced out a little bit, and I was like... Wait, what? Yeah, on yeah, on um but when we like did our first stream, for example, and we went for like five or six <laughs> hours, where I was talking so much, like I couldn't speak for like the next day or so. Like it was just it was not fun. But yeah, I could have worded that better probably. All right. All right. Yeah, just just stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> I'll stop you right there. I could have worded that better, so <clears throat> Uh, I think the system has rebooted. Let's give it a shot. Uh, does it uh, some chance to invite stream below zero for an interview? I mean, I I don't really I don't really do interviews. I'd be down to talk with them for sure. Like if you wanted to do a stream, we'd just hang out and talk. But like interview style, like Q and A, I'm just not really a huge fan of. Yeah, we can like just let the people on stream talk and tell something about their lives. For example, like fortune cookies really disappointed me today. I ordered <laughs> again at the Asian store. And guess what? 
I got a fortune cookie and it said literally the same thing it did last time that never happened to me before. It said it's, you should strengthen your immune system. I I assume they only print these during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, sure, that will increase the likelihood of people getting that, but getting the same fortune cookie twice uh, I don't know about that. Fortune cookie trying to tell you to go get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> propaganda. Uh, just joined. Can anyone give me an update of what's going on? Um, we're testing a hook out to see if we can force a uh, team search strategy to work. Uh, or at least get some information about what's going on under the hood, basically. Yeah, fake cookie. Agreed. I wish the system didn't take so long to recover. Although it sounds like uh, it wasn't as bad as your Pro Apple Watch days. Pro tip on most x86 processors, there's a pin that when signal supply allows you to boot into a pre-installed distribution of Arch Linux. <laughs> the fuck? It's true. <laughs> you won't know until you try it. Just take a 12-volt battery, uh, cut a little hole in the mother in your motherboard so you can access that pin and just uh throw 12 volts on it it'll it'll work so ps4 is x86 so i could have like avoided all the trouble exactly you did all that work when all you had to do was like apply some voltage on the uh on the bga and you would have been fine uh why is there only 1080p quality uh, the the transcoding that's available to us is very limited. Where we're an affiliate, if we were a partner, we would have more options in that regard. But we're not because we're not cool enough. Hell yeah, four K stream. Hell yeah. I could actually do like a fourteen forty p monitor or a stream technically because I'm running on fourteen forty p right now, but I'm downscaling it. What's the status on the PS4? Is it still rebooting? I think it just rebooted. Yeah. How big of a drill bit do I need to find? Uh, need to find that pin. I don't know. Just use lasers. Could just use lasers, man. Would it be awesome? Is if you could use like a lay, and you probably can do this with like millions and millions of dollars, but it'd be awesome if you could just take like a laser by a little device, point it at a chip, and then flip a targeted bit or something in a register, you know? Oh, you can, you can totally do that. Yeah, it probably costs like a shit ton we, of money though. I'm pretty sure we have that equipment at university. Oh, really? You should do that on like the PS4 yeah. or something. So that we can dump higher firmware well, so that an exploit. It's not. I mean, it's not that easy because it really depends on your target. So what they they um, the guys universities were doing, they were basically um, shooting at FPGs FPGAs, and they were trying to implement a fault injection resistant uh, cipher. Because with IS, if you can shoot and flip some bits, it's really easy to break and get the key. That sounds like fun, <clears throat> to be honest. But, I mean, sure. But you have to, I think you have to open up the die and like use acid to like decap the chip and then expose like the die itself and then, um, yeah, point the laser in it and shoot and shit like that. They dump FPGA. So like, okay, neat. I did attack a different chip uh, with something else, and for what I wanted to do is I wanted to do like side channel attack with uh, measuring, and I also wanted to uh, decap the chip. But I realized that there was like package on package, and since like on top of the uh, let's say target, there was a bunch of RAM. I couldn't really open the chip, so because 
the RAM being on top of what I wanted to target make it made it very difficult because then I would have to like kind of remove the RAM or like go through it and that will probably just destroy the device altogether. So it's not always that easy if you don't have like a, let's say, a clear path to shoot. Oh no, something happened. On, uh, the kernel crashed just sitting in the menu. Uh, that's strange. Um, I think it might actually be inside what? of our hook. <clears throat> what I don't quite understand is why do you keep the strings? Like, are you sure that's going to uh, the stack you, you do, like the way you do it? Uh, I can verify that. Um, I'm almost certainly go to the stack. Yep. Though. Please do, because I'm not sure. Why don't you just like allocate something in kernel space? Do you have a primitive for that? I have done that before. You can use the kmm alloc or kmm back, whichever one I use. Um, I have done that before, but I the stack is simpler, so that's why I did it that way. Um, that said, I will quickly confirm that it is actually going to the stack because that's a fair point to bring up. Um, I'm using optimize zero, so stream two. Okay, here we are. Yeah, it's moving it onto the stack. Where? Um. Oh. Yeah, if you look on my stream on binary binary ninja, it's moving the uh, bytes for the string into a RBP. Into the uh, stack. Okay, I see. That works. Please add more quality options. That's out of our control. We uh we can't we can't affect that. That is up to Twitch and uh, Jeff Bezos. So if you want us to have more stream options, just just DM Jeff Bezos and uh, let him know. It'll work. Trust. Um. Oh, hopefully I didn't lose my. Okay, I didn't. Um, I do want to look at this uh, kernel panic because there's an issue here. I don't know what exactly the issue is. So let's cut out all the. How do you have? Can you copy that into VS? Oh uh, yeah, I can. Let me just. Because I have a hard time looking at the uh, log in the console. I just uh, put it in the file called log.txt. Um. I am going to get rid of some of this other stuff that's in between the hook installations. Oh, wait, there was a kernel panic right away. Yeah. Oh, but it's not very useful because it's all jumbled garbage. I do have an instruction pointer, though. Right? Do I? Let me just see. Uh, no, not really. Okay, let's go with the other panic. The other panic is probably the same thing. Alright, so uh, 80, 60, B, 340, FB. So that would be the... Uh, this was allocated at 60, B, 340. Yeah, so at FB in the second hook that gets installed, which I think is the... Um, yeah, it's the M3M print. Okay, so that was at uh, FB, it said, right? 4-0 FB? Yeah. So let's see what's there in Binary Ninja. Um, FB. That is before it gets called, right? Uh, that is inside of the print hook. So it's at uh, B17 plus FB, which is at C12. C12. Um, why is this the problem? I think this X is on your... I think yeah, it looks like that's my um I think that's your read. Yeah. Is there a problem here that I'm not seeing? 
This should be the same as oh, what, what you already have. What's the... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, I see the problem. I see the problem. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that mbuff chain pointer is zero. Oh, shit. Okay, I, yeah, sorry. I forgot. I do have an if in here for that. Um, sometimes, for whatever reason, it is called with zero. I don't know why. Uh, some weird Sony code, probably. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll put that in here. That'll fix that. It's an old ref. Fair enough. Uh, so we got to restart again. So get over to the counter. <sighs> oh, you were um, considering what to get, like, channel points for, right? Like, give out channel points. Or is it only, like, betting? Uh, yeah, we were trying to think of some things we could uh, allow channel points to be spent on. Uh, betting was one thing, but uh, we're open to, like, more ideas. Oh, betting. spend. I was, like... Oh, I, I thought about like earning or something, which is Chad could try to find bucks before us. Oh, that would be super cool. Um, only predictions you can't give away points. Okay, I, I was about to ask you if that was the case. I was pretty sure that was the case, but. That's I wish Twitch did allow you to give points because like there's no reason for them to not allow you to do that. It's not like you can transfer points from one channel to another, so. Wait, what means, like, only predictions? Um, like, the, the only way people can gain points is by betting against other people that put their channel points up. That's the only way you can earn them, other than just spending time in the stream. Uh, mbuff chain PTR well, needs to could... be outside the if line. Uh, yeah, it does, sorry, yeah. Perfect. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I copied too much there. There we go. Good shout. Look, that thing deserves a channel See, point. Yeah, we, we'd give you channel whatever. points if we could. Just pretend like we gave you some. <laughs> uh, does something actually beep when you redeem that? Uh, there is a beep you can redeem. It's like 400 points or something, or maybe it's 1,000. I don't remember what the point cost is on it. But yeah, there is one. Speaking of, we did get another beep, so put that on there. Uh, let's scroll back. Okay. Counter is at 115. Oh, it is. Good eye. How did you manage to get there when the console always beeps twice? It doesn't always beep twice. Um, sometimes if you <laughs> if you have to hold it down from a hang, it'll be an odd. I think it's three times. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, oh, I do have to change this back. Although I didn't read on the service, it's probably fine, but whatever. Do it just to be safe. Yeah, you need to, to recompile. Yep. I hate when I'm in the browser and I have to push the circle button like 15 times for it to actually go back. It's so frustrating. I need a robot to do this shit, honestly. How much I do it. Uh, or if you're triple fault, it beeps once then dies. Yeah. Although I haven't had a triple fault in a really long time. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, that that hook should be should work, I think. All right, cool. Okay. We're getting a shit ton of uh, so, friends, but. So are you good to try running your POC now? Um. Yeah, I kind of just forgot what we were trying to see. I think we were trying to see. I think we we're just trying to go for a panic. Because getting... Well, I don't. Oh wait, do we have like the the uh syscall hook? 
Uh, to force place? garbage collection? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's in place. Um, it'll be interesting to uh, see how... Dude, this shit is gonna flood the log when you do your sprays. <laughs> oh my god. It's gonna take even longer to execute your POC because of the prints. Oh boy. Let's, it'll probably... Let's run it now, I guess. Because... <laughs> Gonna take a I mean, time. if you if you have the clean thing, then yeah, let's do. All right, it should yeah, be going to yours now. Here, wake up, demon. Run, Team Star. Okay, we got it going. But the buff, uh, the hook isn't printing what I expect. Now it is. Let's see. Is it? I think it should be, right? Are these are oh maybe not. Yeah, I was expecting it to print the content, which it isn't really doing. Yeah, it's printing the same type of information, which means maybe our size is wrong. Maybe it's printing something in the header. Might be. There's only one way to find out, which is more logs. To be fair, we'll only see a bunch of these when you free your sprays, right? Which is later on in the execution, so... We'll see, like, a... True. Well, I haven't seen any yet. Um, Baliga was mentioning uh, setting up a... Uh, wire on the PS2, I wire up the reset and power switch to the SDM32. That would be smart. I should do that. I do have an STM32 uh, F103. I have like actually, I think I have like three of those breakout boards because they were like five bucks. And I love the STM32 chips. I think they're really cool. So I definitely have some spare to uh, do something like that. So I should. If Team Stars POC works, can we say POG? Sure. What's POG? Uh, it's like a, a Twitch emote thing. It's like, uh, hype emote, basically. Oh. The unfortunate thing is with these hooks, I don't even know like where your POC is exactly in execution because it's getting buried. Oh, we're at this is call. We did. We I seen the waking up the page demon. Okay. Demon. Uh, mind you explaining the meaning of overlap address as why it's necessary at Teamstar. I'm not sure what he's talking about. Maybe you overlap know. address. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I think the idea is of like the general ease out of free. So the idea is that you have two pointers pointing to the same buffer. Oh, wait. Packet receive trigger. All right, we have something, right? What does it mean? Yeah, can you maybe copy the lock out of that? Uh, I can, yeah. Unfortunately, they don't give me a one click method to do that, but I will do that. Uh, put it in log.txt. Can you not do like control A to select all? I don't think so, no. It doesn't work in terminal. In VS Code. But it is in log.txt now. So. Yeah, so it doesn't look like um, the page really got freed. Waking up the page, Dan. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, the other thing is uh, the, the mbuff being freed thing is not printing the data we expect to, which uh, means we're losing some information there. I, I don't know why that's wrong. I, I feel like hex 28 should be correct, but maybe. I mean, we can just print more we could yeah we could dump the full mbuff if we wanted to but that would be a lot <laughs> dump the full 256 bytes 
Um, but yeah, I don't see I don't see how like the offset could have been wrong though. Because that's at zero. That's going to be an eight byte pointer. That goes to eight. Eight again goes to hex ten. C address T is eight bytes. That goes to eighteen. Uh, that's four to one C. One C to twenty. 22 and then that's going to be 6 mega 28 yeah so it it must be the extended uh header like there must be a packet header set to which is what we're printing probably it's the first few bytes of the packet header um first few bytes of the packet header um maybe does that make sense though I think it might, yeah. Because, yeah, if a if it has a packet header set like this flag set, then it would be using that. Um, and then what is like later. packet header? Um, what's the first field of that? I'm actually surprised I don't have this in the uh, thing. Jolly10, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Welcome in. Um, wait, does my... Yeah, it does work in VS Code. Okay, good. So I'll put that in here. All right. The definition for the packet header is in here now. So, yeah, I think... Mm, no, that doesn't really make sense, because... That doesn't make sense Yeah, what we're printing out isn't either. a pointer. Actually, it could be, because we're only printing out 32 bits, right? So, in the case of these... Uh, uh, let me go to the log, where it's not moving. In the case of these 0425B800, th this could be an address, um, and the upper 32 bits are like the... You know, the FFFF, YYYY, or whatever. Um... Yeah, it's, it's possible we're printing that sometimes. Yeah, that's the thing with, like, MBUFFs with the hook is data could be at, like, three different places, right? It could be here, or it could well, be here. The so it's two different thing places. thing is that I was expecting that we use um, the, the data buff but it it's it doesn't look like we're doing that. You know what? Actually, I I didn't even think about it. The header actually does have a pointer of where the data is. That's the C address T here, the MH data. So we could just dereference that, I think, and that should point to the data buff. That'll make life a lot easier. Yeah, maybe we should we should do that. Um, but where can can that point like either here or here? I think said how it works. I think so. Yeah, I think when it sets up the mbuff and sets up the headers, um, it writes which one it is into that mh data field. Um, one thing I do find interesting too with this header is they have a mh next and mh next packet. I wonder what the difference is between those, because they like. Yeah, I don't know. It says next chain in Q slash record, but I don't know. Maybe one of them is just all the packets, and the other one is like the packets like in order. Like if you receive data which doesn't fit into one. Yeah, can you implement the data data deref? Yeah. So I have that in here now. I do have to adjust the size though. So this will take us to hex 18. Uh, let's do that. That should leave us with hex eight, right? Or, or no, hex 10, yeah. All right, whatever. I mean, we technically don't even need that to be the correct size or do you do size arithmetic? Um, I do a little bit, but it, it shouldn't actually matter that much so no i mean you you don't really take the size of that thing it just deref the next so it doesn't really matter yeah that's true let's just get rid of that then so 
Um, we're down here, MH data. So what we'll do is uh, our star MH data is the mbuff chain PTR MH data. Oh, I wouldn't do it that way. Why don't I would you want to do, do it, it that way? like you in 32? Uh, okay, we can do it that way. Yeah. And then to be honest, all we need to do here is uh, MH data zero, right? So, yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, all right, let's keep it the same. Except we just have to modify this to equal. Yeah, okay, there we go. That'll work. All right, now's the time to place bets. Will that thing crash? It might crash just installing the hook. Oh, it did. Actually, it crashed when we left the browser. Oh, because of we ran your POC, that's why. I forgot your POC does crash when we leave the browser usually, so that's all. That's all good. If we would have placed bets, it would have been a quick decision. Wouldn't have had much time. So this is the one thing which is printing the actual data. Although the other thing is that the reclaim didn't really work. No, even when we force it on all IDs. Which makes me think there might not be any page migration. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit on that on the stream. Uh, Teamstar and I were DMing each other a little bit when I just made that little discovery yesterday. Um, so I was saying I think that pages are going to be per CPU core, or at least per CPU cluster. Um, what Teamstar was saying is maybe those pages can migrate between cores because if they didn't, then you would end up with uh, out of memory situations more often. Like it wouldn't be able to be as effective. Um, so it's possible there's page migration between cores, but I kind of doubt that that would be the case. Um, because that would actually, I think that would actually hurt performance, right? If you had to do that, because you would you would then be contending for the lock. Quite understand what do you mean by page migration? I mean, there's like two possible cases. One is once a page gets like pinned to a core, it never leaves the core, which doesn't really make really makes sense in my opinion because like what if you start the game which allocates a lot of memory then leave the game and enter the browser you'd be with left with no memory well no because um like i think the games or... and browsers get their own like memory area and like system memory for like shell core or something will never allocate in the same range in the same page range i think that's how it works could be wrong though. That's just my speculation. Like virtual memory addresses? Yeah. Because games, like I know with the PS4, it has a unified memory model, right? It has eight gigabytes of RAM available to it. There's a certain split of where games, I think, can only use maybe five gigabytes of that. And then I think another three gigs are reserved for like uh, kernel and everything else. And be, and there's only a certain amount of cores that will run on games too. Like I think out of the eight cores the system has, maybe five of them will execute in games, and then the other three won't. So that's where I'm thinking, like, if the pages are per core, that would make sense. Because you could uh, effectively do the memory limiting and the, the core pinning all in one. Oh, that's why you only need four. And not an eight. I think so. That might explain it. Because assuming it's true, you would want to have the memory shared by the game course, like sharing with all the cores. And then you leave with the game course, with the browser, with the networking, and with the system. And then you have four of them. Yeah. Um, I was trying to huh. find a definitive 
like core pinning thing. Um, I will bring up one thing that I saw. Uh, it was actually thanks to a friend in, in IRC. Uh, it was a Naughty Dogs article where they were talking about like PS4 internals. And uh, this was the image from the slide. So GPU zero, core zero is always going to be used for the, or sorry, GPU is going to be those cores. Um, on the APU, the CPU cores, like the first one, core zero is going to be used for the main game loop. And then for everything else, they have these job IDs, which um, I think like the cores, core one is like networking shit. And then core, I, I don't know the exact breakdown for all the cores, but I know there's like core pinning. It's like really common. Probably as like a micro optimization or something. Try to make their scheduler a little bit uh, more efficient where the CPU is so garbage. But inadvertently, I think they're going to kill our exploit strategy because of it, too. Might be. Um, I did research. Because the picture some... shows core, core uh, 0 to core 5, right? Or 6? I think 5. Yeah, core 5. So, so sh uh, 6 cores there. Which is one, and then we have core six, core seven, and eight, and we again have like the four different IDs. Hmm. Does anybody in chat know how many cores a game can use on the PS4? Like what cores it uh, can leverage? It's something we could test. We could write a quick homebrew app that just like runs a bunch of threads and then prints out the core. ID because there's a SC uh, lib kernel function for it. So if, if we need to do that research, we could. But um, I think I think games get all except one. Oh wow, okay. I mean, you can WebKit only has two. I know that much. I think six and seven are WebKit. If I like, if memory serves from uh, some stuff I've seen. I know at one point Core 7 was reserved, too, and then, and then Sony opened it up later on because there were news articles around that, people hyping it up uh, from the SDK or something. That said, let me go ahead and uh, install our hooks again and run Mira. So what does uh, It Kills Our Exploit strategy entail? It just means we might not be able to do a page reclaim attack, which is fine. There is, a, like, um, the flow exploited this bug without doing this, so it's not like the bug is dead or anything. Like, he, he did exploit it against PS4. Um, it just kind of sucks for potential future exploits if you're stuck in a situation where you need to use page reclaiming. It's looking like it might not be available to you, and that bug might be dead in, in future cases. Um, so Mira should be able to run. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Yeah. But honestly, this is a good zone like mitigation strategy. I mean, I don't really understand why like Apple is not doing something like that cuz it really is super simple and does not have any overhead if you um say that a certain zone can only allocate at certain mem virtual memory addresses. Yeah, I mean, I think in this case, I don't think they in, like Sony intended that to be the case. I think they just got lucky, like they often do. <laughs> um, by the way, I, I think looking at the prints, it seems we do have data printing because I did see like a like the data looks more random, I guess, which is a good sign. But it's still s showing OX eleven. I mean, you can just for fun run the exploit and see what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Uh, yeah, server. It fun. still looks like headers, honestly. Uh, yes, you did mention trying to use the exploit you were working on for weeks before checking out Sarah's POC. Yeah, I just wanted to evaluate like this strategy and if it's good in general for PS4. Oh, I think we may have fucked up. Why do you think we fucked up? Let me 
because we do we actually dereference the data? I think we do. Yep, we uh, we should be doing that on the the axis, right? Because we're creating a pointer to that and then using it as an array, so that should be reading the memory properly. Ah, huh. yeah, that should be good. But that doesn't look like the data I was expecting in uh, uh, either. I think we may have fucked up sounds ominous. <laughs> it is pretty ominous. I know that QWERTY, the flow, clear as else if watching that. I, if you mean watching the stream, they, they might be. I don't know. QWERTY's probably not. QWERTY's probably working on a zero day or something to meet the uh, 300 per year quota. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're right. There are some patterns in the data I'm seeing that would suggest it might be a header. Like, I'm seeing uh, 3333 a lot, 45045, 11. But I don't know why, because... Or did you maybe not not compile it? No, I, I always make and uh, make clean before installing it. I mean, we can try to play around with this more, but at, at this point, it really seems like we may want to change the strategy. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I'm I'm pretty like it's hard to give a definitive answer without having everything reversed, right? Um, but like maybe I'll work on that just as like a fun thing on future streams or something. But I'm pretty sure these pages are per CPU, which is unfortunate because um the the networking stuff runs on a different core than the browser so you know means you're never going to get access to those pages probably uh yeah ps4 basically if there is if if there is a way to uh <laughs> reclaim the pages um then that's something that should be parked and if that can't be parked then the strategy it's not viable for now. It could potentially be viable if you manage to find a spray primitive that ran on the same core. That said, it, I think that's pretty unlikely. Um, that's something that could be looked into. Uh, that is an interesting idea. Yeah, I mean, so the the problem because is we, we are using pipes, which is. I think on the same core uh, as WebKit. I think it would be, yeah. It would be executing in but WebKit's if we context. Use... Huh, that, that actually is an interesting idea. So I guess my question would be, what could we allocate on the networking core that wouldn't be mbuffs? That's where it gets kind of complicated, right? Is... So how do we know like this allocation is like on the networking core? Like where do we get like this information in first place? Other than knowing that's how it works. Um, I don't think I have any code I can point to to show that. Um, this is like one thing that would be really nice is a full core breakdown of the PS4, like writing some, I don't know how you would do it exactly. Um, like, I don't know how you would be able to tell which tasks oh. are running on which core. If there's something Can you can patch you... or hook in the kernel to do that, I don't know. What you could do is for the hook, you can add um, like the CPU ID instruction, which will show us the core um that the ember free is running on which is supposed to be the network core right that's true yeah um would the cpu core be in the thread uh well that's past the syscalls so that might not be ideal i'm just trying to think of how you what would do you get mean? The, i'm just trying to think of how you would get the core id like what structure you would be looking at that you can um, 
Because it should be in the threat oh, the, structure, the probably, right? Uh, shouldn't it be in the just like the CPU ID instruction? Uh, no, I mean, you can restrict core to specific thread. Specific core to thread. Yeah, but it won't let I mean, us assign what are you trying... to core one. What That's are you exclusive. trying to find? So you're saying in the hook uh, to print out the, the core ID, right? Um, yeah, which would A, show us the core ID of the networking stack, uh, of, the, of the networking thing, and B, verify that it's always the same core. Which still, I don't know how useful it is. I'm like, sure we can do that and exactly verify, but um, still not sure what to do with that information. The CPU ID give you the information on the like CPU as a package or on the core that it's running on. I think it gives you the package. Oh, I have no idea of x86. Yeah, I, I think it gives you the full package, not just the core it's running on. So I don't think that would. We could use a CPOD instruction. Um, but then again, probably the thread might have it. Yeah, I think this the it's somewhere in the thread struct. Um, that said, the thread struct is like hex a thousand bytes or something. It's huge, so it might not be trivial to find out exactly what offset that's at. <coughs> In fact, I don't even so the other saying. question, the other question is though, oh, oh, maybe this is a good time to look at Slayer Govi's POC because he does allocate something inside the M buffs. Yeah, uh, we could do that in just a sec. Uh, I'm just looking. I think I might have. Is it in the file header? If it's not, God damn. I used to know where this struct was, like the exact header file, and now I can't remember where it is. Which one? The thread structure. Oh, the thread? It's a, is it in thread.h, maybe? I... It's, oh, kthread.h, possibly? Although... No. Um, I did want to check chat for a second. I know it's it's been a little bit. Um, I'm a CS student first year that wants to go into networking and security later on, but I want to apply programming and automation to it. Um, now that I have two choices ahead of me for next year, full stack and networking, I don't want to miss on either. But with net networking, there's a lot of programming any There's not a lot of programming anymore. But with networking, I get my CCNP from Cisco at graduation. Um, so you want to do both networking and systems programming? Is what you're getting at, I guess. I mean, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of active development going on, like, you know, INET 6 and INET and Unix and all that. Like, all those protocols have been implemented for a while, but yeah, I don't know what, like, opportunities there'd be where you could do programming with networking as well. That's kind of a, a niche area, I guess. What about set socked up? Uh, what about set socked up? Can we use that um, as a spraying primitive? I think that would still spray in the context of WebKit, to be honest with you, because like the syscalls you invoke are going to be ran on the same core that was running in userland, right? So, how is MBuff then not on the, like, on a different core? Wait, doesn't that fall, like, doesn't that still allocate MBuffs? Uh, set sock opt? Or am I, yeah. Uh, I think there is a sock opt that allocates an MBuffs. But... but where would that allocation go? 
Hmm, that is a good question, actually. Because it wouldn't make sense to have two zones, one for the networking core and one for the WebKit core, or does it? Like, sure, it's Sony, so we can't know for sure, but you know what I'm saying. I, yeah, I know what you're saying, roughly. Um, yeah, overall, I, I like the idea of, of making it print out the, uh, the hook. The CPU and the hook. I just can't find the stupid thread structure. Um, I don't know if it's in the man page. CPU, CPU ID, core ID. Is it in, wait, is it in proc.h? Yeah, it might be in proc.h. Yeah, it is. Took me a few minutes to remember where it was. Um, I mean, network security isn't really taught either. Um, so just to be clear, there's more to security besides just network security. Yeah, I mean, NetSec is uh, probably the most common, I guess. But AppSec is more interesting, I think, to me. anyway. Okay, this actually, this might be what Flats was talking about with CPU set. Um, in the thread structure, there is a, a TD CPU set, which is an affinity mask, which might have the core ID. RDTSCP. Read timestamp counter and processor ID. Wait, what, what instruction is this? RDTSCP. I've never seen this instruction before in my life. I love x86. So it, it does say that um, it is available on newer CPUs. So I'm not sure whether it's available in first place. But if it is... Okay, let, let me just read this for a sec. It reads the timestamp counter into the EDX and EAX registers and also reads the value of the MSR into ECX. EDX is loaded with the high order 32 bits of the MSR. Uh... What? Okay, so are they saying that this MSR is the processor ID? Is that what they're saying? Um. I mean, the, the problem I have with this is MSRs are going to be chip specific, right? I don't think like I don't know if that's going to be universal or not. It's processor ID, not mm. core, I think. Oh, I think I see what you mean. Okay. Is still IP6 exploitation? Yeah, that's what we're doing in this show. Oh, I see. Um, I see. Look at that CPU set. CSID. CPU right. set ID. What is this? I, I do not know what this is. You want to see my favorite x86 instruction? I do. Let's see it. Open it up on stream. <laughs> uh, spec, what's the beep counter at? Prediction time is up. Uh, I can check that. Um, 117. Where we're at. I'm not sure. All right. I'm not sure if I should should make that joke on stream though. <laughs> <laughs> People can infer. I'll type in I chat. Think. Count the number of leading zero bits. X eighty six has so oh, many so the, like. So 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 the joke is in Discord. I'm not sure if I should say that on stream. Oh, I mean, yeah. I people can infer, I think, from the mnemonic of the instruction. <laughs> <laughs> if they can't, then you know, God bless you. I guess you can get somebody to explain it to you. <laughs> All right. So basically, the joke is just pronounce the mnemonic. But yeah, not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep it safe. 
play it safe. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought the CPU set could be red, maybe, but I don't actually know <coughs> specifically what that is. There is one interesting here, though. Oh, there we go. These two members, last CPU and on CPU. So you can actually get what uh, the last CPU it was ran on and the current CPU it's ran on, too. That's cool. We can get both of those. Um, now we just got to find the offsets. I'm not sure. Of that shit. I'm not sure what to do with that information, but yeah, it is interesting, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we can just print out both, just see if there's any like patterns. But I think the the on CPU is what we actually want. Uh, so we need two things. Uh, we need to figure out what offsets these are at, and I need the uh instructions that get you the current uh, the cur thread which i think reads from the cs register maybe it's it's one of the the selectors i don't remember which one though um gs zero yeah that's that's right gs that's what i was thinking of gs zero has thread um yeah so let's get the offset i guess of the uh on cpu so the way I do this usually is I get like a dump of the memory and then you can, for example, see there's like two pointers, then there is a bunch of, uh, um, what's that, members which are not pointers and then again pointers and by that try to pin down what the offset is. Okay. Um, the way I do it is I just try to look for the members in like Ida and just reverse the offset, but your way is probably quicker and well, it depends, I guess, on the structure in question. Um, I am going to check if this thread CTOR function exists on, if it's like a symbol on uh, 1.76. No, it's not. Okay. It's probably like an inline thing or something where it's just not existent. Um, Ooh, this looks like a function. That oh, shouldn't exist. you be? What's that? Shouldn't you be able to look for the instruction which dereferences the um, thread pointer? Isn't there like a specific reg register on x86? Yeah, uh, it was pointed. I think it's GS0, the global segment. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. There is a macro in, in BSD for doing that, but yeah, we'll just do it in line assembly probably. Um, so yeah, use. No, I'm saying arm. you could do the, hmm? use that to um, search in the disassembler for wherever the um, thread is dereferenced and used. Yeah. Um, so RMR lock uses this member. <clears throat> in this array access after a compiler memory barrier. So this is 34H. That's got to be where the uh, PCPU find. That's probably what this is doing. Let's just double check that, but I'm almost certain that's the case. 201. Or, sorry, did I look at the wrong thing? Wait, what? That's an array access. Why is it being compiled as a function? Okay, I th I think this is fine anyway. TD crit mess, that's doing... Oh, maybe I have K for a sec. Yeah, no worries. Oh, there it is. It's at F XF9. I found it. I was looking too far, uh, too low. Okay, so RAX, it's moved from RBX plus F9. Okay. That is a very strange offset for the field, although I guess it kind of makes sense. It is a character. Yeah, so this will be F8 and this will be F9. So let me uh, write that down because I will absolutely forget that shit in like not long. <laughs> so we'll go to uh, notes. Or I'll just put it in strat. So that's going to be at F8. It's going to be at 9. 
All right. That was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Although this is 1.76. Um, it could have changed on 5.05, .05, so I should actually check that. I'd kind of forgotten about that point. Um, I'm not going to have this labeled on 5.05, .05, so I'm going to have to go ahead and find this. Uh, where's it called from? Is there any strings here? No. Uh, here's a string, OSD set, and it's called at the top of the function. Nice. Should be easy to find. Doing some quick reversing. Yep, this is the function here. So this is OSD set. Oh, it, it is actually labeled. 5.5. Okay, well, <laughs> just did some work for nothing, I guess. Um, although the function looks way right, different back. between the two. Welcome back. Um, Whoa, is this mislabeled? What the f What did Sony do? This is very different. I think they have like a... They, they basically like... Is that your... Um, your labeling, maybe? Uh, This, I... Th no, I don't think so. I don't have RM lock. You don't have it? You don't have RMR lock? Okay. I did find no, it anyway. I don't think I have that. Um, I will give you the uh, address of that. I mean, it's the kernel dump you're looking at, right? Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the function oh. I'm looking for, though. So yeah, F9, it hasn't changed. the. So F9 is the current CPU. So I found the offset team star. For the uh, in the thread structure, I put it in the, the strat dot text file. FC. Um, looking at chat. Hey, are they going to use a new hint? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to that. No worries. I just wanna we just wanna verify something for the reclaim strategy. Um, that said, I will be back in a quick second. I do have to step away for a minute. Um. We have the same challenge up on the BRB screen from last week because it was up for like maybe like two seconds, so nobody was able to solve it anyway. So we do have a challenge up for anybody that's interesting, uh, interested in checking that out. Um, and then we will be right back to uh, resume what we were doing. Um, so yeah, I'll be like less than five minutes.
All right, we're back. Um, seems like people in chat are, are having some fun trying to figure out the challenge. Um, I'm not sure if anybody got it yet. No solution? Okay, cool. All right. Um, yeah, so let me just look at the function for a second here. I will literally just copy this into a uh, into our hook, and uh, we should be good to go, I think. So in our hook for mbuff, uh, cpu uh, set d last uh, cpu. There we go. Cool. So in here, we'll do a quick ASM snippet. Uh, yeah, I do save the registers. That should be okay. Oh, actually, I would like to. I forget all the inline assembly semantics. Okay, here's. Oh yeah. Doing. Um, we'll do a move. Uh, should be able to do RBX and then. Uh, RBX plus Cx F. What was it? It was F eight, or F nine is the current one. So yeah, F eight is the last one. Um, and then how do I move that variable into? An or how do I move that register into a variable? Uh, What's... Game and line assembly. Uh, RP. Um... Moff... Uh... Percent zero RPX... Um... Funny thing is, I had to do this in Muscle a long while ago. I was doing tool chain stuff. I just don't remember it very well. That's not correct, though. Just look at the commit log real quick. Um, wow, there's a few commits, though. I think it was in the Arc PS4 Syscall Arch. Yeah. So that was for loading registers. Um, oh, right. You can do this shit, right? Can you do that in reverse? Can you do this shit in reverse? I wonder. I actually already added the code. Do you have it? That that looks about right. Um, the other I, thing is this too. Um, that's what I had for loading register. You should be able to do that in reverse too. Um, use the register keyword what do you want or whatever. But we can just try uh, what you have there. So I think that's um right. yeah. Let me just test that on on X uh, on my on my MacBook though. Okay, go for a quick test. I'm going to take a drink anyway. Huh. Um... Is it correct? Not yet, it does not compile. But a token. Are you sure I can use dot intel syntax? Oh yeah, you the way you did it, maybe not. If you take that out and try it. Um thank you for the hundred bits. RV TechCR. Why can I not use dot intel syntax? Uh, uh, 
If you can't, I we don't will have to... Uh, yeah, actually, no. I, you should be able to use Intel syntax. If if we can't, we'll have to switch everything up. And I hate gas. I really... I hate uh, AT&T syntax. Trust yeah, me. no, I think that's not the issue. I think I'm just... Uh, uh, one thing I will try, though, like, while you're trying that out on MacBook, I do want to see if my little snippet will work. Um, <laughs> how to do shit. <laughs> my, I hate like my lack of knowledge in extended, some uh, extended ASM, but. The, the problem with it, too, is it's so compiler-dependent. Like, most of the time I use Clang. Right now I'm using GCC, and uh, it's, it's, like, different between every... There's no standard on it, basically. Lack of knowledge, dude, you're speaking enchantment table? The fuck? <laughs> I mean, in inline assembly is pretty much magic. Um, that is. I can't figure out the correct syntax. God damn it! Uh, Something. Jinxy Bix, thank you for the hundred bits. Um, I was looking in chat a little bit. It seems uh somebody might have figured out the challenge. See the the BRB challenge. That was fast. If that's the case. Yeah, it's been solved. All right, cool. Yeah, the issue was the the signness, if I remember correctly. It's been a little bit since I looked at the challenge, but um, GF two P eight Athene QB solved it. Nice, very hard to pronounce name, but nice. Um, yeah, I mean. I thought I had code to do this. It's really damn annoying. Um, maybe I will just use gas syntax just to, you know. So we should be able to do uh, move GS0 into um, percent. Is it percent one? I think we might be able to do. And then if we just do that. Uh, then we should be able to move into um, TD. All right, that should compile. Let me just check if that compiles. Operand number out of range. Okay, dude. Uh, oh, I hate gas, man. I hate this. I hate AT and T syntax. It really pisses me off. I know it's an AT&T syntax issue. Do I have to put percent here? I don't know. I, no, it's still invalid. All I want to do is see the CPU cores, man. Um, Operand number missing after percent letter. Like, how do you access the, the GS0 register in gas? Oh, maybe you have to do it, um, percent GS 0x0? Zero zero? I don't know if that'll make a difference. No, it's not that either. Why does everyone try to jailbreak the PS3 through WebKit? Try it with a game like A Way Out or a DVD Prison Break. 
WebKit is your WebKit is the most powerful because browsers give you a lot of primitives to work with. When you're dealing with games, your vectors are more limited. And I think game sandboxes are actually locked down even more, if I recall. Yeah, I'm seeing other people that are using the exact same code that I am for uh, the GS register, and it works for them and it doesn't for me. I don't, I don't understand. Did did my code not work? Um, when I tried it, no, it didn't. Hmm. Like, no, it's not underscore underscore ASM. I don't know. Uh, should be a relatively simple thing to do, but it's just not. Um, uh, there's another thing we could do. What's that? Let me see. Why is this so bizarre? What, what compiler do you use? GCC. All right. I don't think that will make any difference. Um, Dude, if I change this to like RAX, does it work? No, it's you still can, saying you invalid. can do something. What's the code you had? Um, that's what I had, basically. Um, just is that no, like the the actual useful thing. What do you mean the actually useful thing? Or is that what you need to get? Well, the I just want to get the thread pointer. So yeah, I just I just want to get it from GS zero. Um, actually, GCC, exploiting this scenario yeah. would be hard. Yeah, exploiting the scenario in the CT in the BRB challenge would be very difficult. Yeah. Uh, RAX. Do you need to do like? Yeah, you should be able to get it like that. Fuck that. Is that it? Maybe Intel syntax? Yeah, we will have to use Intel. Thanks. Looks like that works, I think. Yeah, just says unused variable. Um, what I will... What variable, I will, though? Oh, that one. I'm going to change that to a... Pointer. That way we can. Uh, oh, you can just actually. You know what? We're gonna make it a chart. That way, when we go to access it in the thing here, uh, when we do the printf, we can just do td zero x uh, f f eight or f nine rather, and then td eight. That should work, right? You went eight. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Or not. Uh, what was the issue? Oh, you don't have UN8. Wait, what? No, it's not UN8 that's missing. It's uh, oh, unknown pseudo op Intel syntax move. Oh, did I forget the. Yeah, I forgot the backslash then. I think that was the problem. Let's do it like normal here. What's the oh, backslash T for? Oh, oh my god. Uh, just a tab uh, indent. But it, it doesn't matter, because now it doesn't work. <sighs> what the fuck? Okay. I mean... What is the issue? Hold on, I'm just gonna change this around. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. Different syntaxes. Uh, junk zero after expression, but why? That's correct. Does it have to be zero H? Like, what is its problem? Like, how? Oh, do we need to do a ret? I I don't think that's the issue. It's <sighs> fucking 
hell. This is frustrating. It's got to be a syntax issue with gas. Do you have to maybe access it like that? Like with a percent sign? Yeah, that was the issue. I fucking hate gas, dude. It's so frustrating. But at least we got it working. Alright, let's go back to uh, PS4 so we can install that hook. Um, I think I do have to rerun the server because it should be... I think it's running your thing right now. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh shit! Yeah, we did run your uh, your exploits, so that panicked us. I forgot about that. Okay, we're gonna hit one nineteen here probably in a second. This is a typical day as a coder. I mean, I I really dislike um like how inline oh, wait, assembly poof. works with compilers. So that's why I was before okay, we sure. add that, is there anything we can fix about like the actual data printing or do we have no clue why that's wrong if you want we can make it print a un64 instead of a 32 so we get a bit more data wait why yeah i think hmm. like we can change this to yeah let's do that and then we'll do uh Yeah, perfect. We'll do it that way. Uh, let's go back to the console. Go to the bottom here. It's in its second reboot, so we should be good in a minute. I mean, plus on pointers in C implicitly multiplies by the size of the pointed two types, so the statement is true. Yeah. Yes, I think Z is right. The that happens at the compiler level. Um, is it actually allowed to give hints like the flow did? I I don't know. I've never submitted through Sony's bounty program. I don't know what their policies are. I don't imagine they care. They probably don't care, honestly. I mean, the thing you have to understand with Sony is. I don't even think they really care about older jailbreaks, in all honesty. As long as there's nothing on latest firmware, uh, like you're not going to have any issues with cheating. Piracy is going to be limited because you're not going to be able to pirate anything that's uh, has a minimum firmware higher than the jailbreakable firmware. So I don't think Sony really cares that much about jailbreaking at like a lower firmware. Because if they did, that Hacker One report never would have went public in the first place. So. If it's patched, why would Sony care? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, they're past it. Uh, you need the beep counter. Um, I just had it up, did I not? I had it at one nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did beep. It maybe it didn't come through the stream, but it did come. It, it did beep because I just restarted the system. Um, and speaking of that, I'm actually able to, uh, run our tests, so I gotta run Mira really quick. Okay, Mira is ran. Uh, we'll make clean, and then we should be good. You need to get more beeps. The last prediction was waiting for 150. This one is 130, and you didn't even hit that. I'm sorry. We'll try to... Well, we'll get one here, because we fucked up something, apparently. 
don't know what we fucked up because the uh, system doesn't seem fit to uh, give us non-encrypted crash information. But uh, Let's see if we can look at the source and figure out what the fuck's going on because we're not going to find it out from the log, that's for sure. Can you actually look at the uh, decompilation of this? Yeah, I can. If the get thread pointer works as expected. That, that's a good shout, actually. We should have done that. We may want to add a red instruction. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Okay, so we're looking at the print. Uh, so this is doing the register backup. Um, does not return. Yep. Yeah, it's because we don't have a ret. Okay, let's double check that. Wow. Yep, yeah, it should work now. We're good. Uh, also, one other thing that's right. interesting that I will point out, it's it's not really like too relevant, but I, I just thought it was funny. Did you notice at the start of the functions in my payload, it has an NBR64 instruction? No, what is it? It's an it's a CET instruction. Uh, control enforcement what? technology. It's it's basically CFI. I have no idea why, but <laughs> I'm getting CFI uh, compiled into my payloads. It's just GCC. Oh, nice. But yeah, I'm getting uh, I'm getting CET instructions compiled in, even though the PS4 doesn't support CET. So this is basically just a knop on the PS4. But I have no idea why they're getting compiled in. Um. Anyway. We got to go for a reboot and then we can uh, try again. Um, so, yeah. Head back over to the beep counter. Uh, that's a feature. CET instructions are just knobs on unsupported systems. Yeah, I know. Um, they they picked op codes that were like a it's like a knob Q word or something on uh, or a not a knob D word I think on older systems. Um, interestingly enough, though, RE bot cannot uh, cannot disassemble it. Uh, if you take these instructions and uh, while we're waiting for the PS4 to reboot. Let me just make sure I copied them. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so if we do like x64, it cannot decompile them. I don't know why. Because they should be uh, like parsable on all systems that run x64, but they're not. So just keystone things. I wish more consoles would come to ARM. Because then we could use much nicer payloads. Uh, PS4 does technically run ARM. Not as the main CPU, but uh, it does have an ARM CPU. Do we have code execution on that? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, it's what uh, V. Picur, well, I'll never say his name properly, a uh, Russian guy, he did a presentation a few years ago. It's the. EAP processor, the, the background processor for downloads and stuff. Thank you for the sub. Welcome in. Uh, Ver, Verlorian. God damn it. Verlornium cyberspace. That's what I'm going to say. Thank you. We have code exec on everything except Samu. Yeah. Yeah, they have a code exec on EAP. It's basically like a background processor. It runs its own FreeBSD kernel um, and it's responsible for offline or uh like sleep mode downloading and handling everything with sleep mode and all that shit. Um you can't directly get code execution from like EAP to the x86 processor though. I don't think. I think there is some you IPC can but or cannot. you can't. You cannot. Can How do you get code execution on the ARM core though and what do you do with that? That I am not certain on all the details. 
Um, you'd have to check out the Recon Brussels presentation. Um, I actually forget what the initial vector was for even exploiting that, to be honest. On arm of EMC, oh, he did glitch. Oh, okay, it was glitch attack. Okay. Oh, so that's not like a practical thing. Well, like for for the day-to-day -day usage. Okay, so we should be getting to run our hooks. Why write an AT&T ASM? Because we're broken people and we just keep... Oh, oh man, what now? Now I'm even more of a broken person. What happened? We uh, Panic? Yeah, we got a kernel panic. Um, it's probably on the... From the hook? 58... Wait, what? Hold on. It is in the I hook. did modify the six eight the get five, thread pointer again, six, but should be good, right? Five, Fifty-eight. This is executing before the hook payload. Which is why it's crashing, but how is it getting there? Last branch from eight F. Okay. Let's take a look at what the hell's going on. Eight F. So that's gonna be in um five plus eight F is gonna be ninety four. So ninety four. That's not even an instruction. What? There's fuckery afoot. I don't know what's going on. This crash doesn't make any sense. It's branching from... It says how? page not present. Yeah, because it's jumping... So see how we have the hook payload allocated at uh, 68958000? It's jumping to 68957FEF. It's jumping before the payload's allocated, but I don't know why. Like something is getting malformed in the this in the opcodes that are getting written for the payload, but I don't know why. Uh... Is it maybe in the? I mean, this call instruction looks fine. It should be returning and popping back to here, but it's like it's not. Uh, yeah, I think I may know. Is the... Is that, is that legal to define a function inside a function? No, it's not. Yeah, so we... How do you copy it in? Oh, good point, actually. Yep, that's the problem. Um, You're missing I just I just thing. take a function pointer to this and copy it. I don't copy any functions that would call outside of that. So we would need this to be in line. No, we don't. We can just do that. I see what you're doing. This still isn't going to work, though, unless I modify things. Because the way I get the size of the function is I look for this this return. So it will stop copying before it reaches this. Where is that, though? Um, that's in the main.c file. You can see I have this shitty get function size function, and it checks for the move EAX uh, hex1337 uh, leave ret instructions. So that's how it finds the function size at runtime. Um, I We could change the hook function call, actually. Get just do like a... Fun. Where is the, oh, it's a main dot c? Where the fuck is that? I could just add it, like in the when we set up the argument. It's just not very clean, but whatever. I don't really care that much about how clean it is. Yeah, just OX twenty. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> that would mess up the trampoline, though. <laughs> 
Um, Wait, what? The trampoline is put right at the end of the function, that way, like the way I look. So, all right, let's see. So where? Uh, that's in the install hook function. Okay, so. Um, Wait, is it gonna mess shit up or not? That shouldn't mess shit up. Actually, you know what? It will mess shit up. Um, because of the return. How so? I. Mm, what are you doing with the return? We can't have a return opcode in the payload. I cut it out. Why? Because we jump to the payload. We don't call it. Because I didn't want to mess up the stack outside of uh, inside of the hook. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, bottom line is, I think we're going to have to move that in line, essentially. Um, okay. Okay. So let's move that in line if we can. That will make things a lot easier. I mean, this should, like, if you just change the RAX to a percent one, you should be able to do what we were trying before, right? If we just do this and then we do uh, equals R. Uh, um, how do we want to do this? Can you compile it and check if that does anything? Just wait, let's go back to. That's how it was, and then we do all ways in line. Yeah, we can give it a shot. Can you check whether that worked? Well, it compiled. I don't know what it, if it actually did anything, but we can try it. Um, no, that does it as a call still. Uh. Thought you were being clever. We put more inlines. More in inlines. Just add more inlines. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just make sure we compiled it right. And it, oh, it didn't compile. Um, undefined reference to get thread pointer. Um, yeah, because probably because of your optimization. May well, I I actually don't run any optimization. I have O zero set. Yeah, because O zero doesn't compile shit in line. Oh, fair enough. But I, I also this is what's that? And yeah, this is one of the reasons you can't um uh compile the Linux kernel without optimization. That's interesting. I didn't it, know that. Yeah, because it it requires shit, which otherwise wouldn't compile. So you can only compile certain functions without optimization. So equals R and then bracket TD, right? Yeah, does that do anything? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, what are you trying? Yeah, can you compile that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're getting the same bullshit error I was getting before. Um, what is it though? I will send it over to you now. <laughs> Invalid ASM operand number missing after percent letter. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But... Oh, can you try now? At this point, I'm just guessing. What did you change? Did it work? No, I, I was just, I, I had to save it, so that did work, actually. What did you change? I just added more percent. Uh, the <laughs> AT&T way. All right. Uh, let's see if it compiled to what we want, but it seems that might have been the answer. Uh-oh. What, what is Benja doing? Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. Whoa. Okay, I don't know what Benja's doing right now. 
Thank you for the bits. Looks like a hex 68 of them. Thank you. Um, I should have done that half an hour ago. Yeah, dude. I don't know what... I think Benja's, uh, like, dead. Dude, just object dump dash D. But why? It, it hasn't failed me before like this. It's never... Binary Ninja, what are you doing? Let me just open it again. Let me see if I can fix it. Bring it back to life. Oh, no. Oh. Or we just run it. We could YOLO the shit out of it, yeah. Um, I would have to... Yeah. I'd have to restart the system, though, anyway. So Z will be happy we're getting more beeps. Okay, I think Binja is brought back from the dead. I think we're good. Um, that is really weird that that happened. I've never seen that before. Alright, um, it looks good though, from what I can tell, because it, yeah, it does it in line, and uh, that looks good. Uh, TD, and then we exit. Yeah, okay, I think that should work. So when we're rebooted, we should be good to go. Nice. Uh, with the pro tip, I totally will say fair. obligatory uh, use nano. We'll we'll push nano a little bit, and get more people on the on board. Uh, what were you gonna say there, Team Star? Sorry. I kind of forgot what, was, what we were trying to do in first place. Um, we're reading the CPU ID of what's executing that free. So we're getting True. that. From what the does it give us? What do you mean? What does it give us? We wanted to figure out why if we, are we doing that because we're we wanted to see if it was running on CPU core one or if it was running on the in the context of the WebKit browser. Uh, okay, yeah. So, to check whether um our Zone reclaim issues are related to CPU pinning. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, did the channel just auto mod itself? Z is running a bot for uh, the language stuff because it's been a bit of a problem in the, in the streams. Aha! Uh -huh. What's the bot doing? Um, he wrote a thing to detect if like, non-English messages, and they get deleted automatically. Nice. So, look at our log. Every clean uh... line... Actually, there was one 7 in there. But everything else is 1 or 0. Which we do not have control of. Oh, there is 0. Yeah, but that's probably some other like background running thread for like I don't know why game related stuff would be running, but like I, those are just M buffs that we don't control. What we should try is running your POC and see what CPUs it gives for the M buffs related to your POC. So uh, I'm gonna rerun the server with your sure. POC. <clears throat> so this one is zero and one. Yeah, that, that's. Do what we want to run, run the same like thing here inside WebKit, or do we not care? Like, sorry, say again. So if... Are you running the POC? Not yet. I'm gonna run that right now. 
Oh, there was CPU 7. Yep, this is all... So, this is an interesting thing I observed, too. Um, all the M buffs that were used, they don't get freed when you leave the browser. They get freed when you re-enter the browser. So, that's when the cleanup happens. So, let's see what happens in your POC. <clears throat> Lots of ones and zeros. CPU seven. Yeah, and I would think what those would be your M buffs, right? Because of like the timing of when they're happening. I'm not sure on the data. The data still like doesn't really make sense. Like it's not what you would expect, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like at least some of them run on CPU 7, which I believe would be WebKit. So, I don't know, maybe the reclaim strategy is still viable? Yeah, I don't understand why only a few of them are really on CPU 7. Yeah, it's like they're... There hasn't been enough compared to how many you spray, right? Are these only the ones that are like double freed, maybe? I wouldn't think Which so. Which doesn't make sense either, but... We're getting yeah, a lot of sevens right now. Seven. We're getting a lot of them right now. What part uh, of the exploit I, is I that? I think I just saw uh, freeing in the log. At the end, we'll check what the log says, but... All right, so the exploit runs through. So we'll put you to the side, and we'll go into log.txt. Um, trying to find exactly where I said that. Three, oh, I can't search for three. That's in there a lot. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is okay, so like you have been... freeing free spray, I think. And that's when I saw a bunch of the sevens come up. Maybe. Freeing pre spray, where is that? It is a little bit above that, but. Pre spray. There was one CPU 5, dudes. Yeah, I mean, you gotta factor in, M, M buffs are gonna be used by more than just the POC, they're gonna be used by a lot of things in the system in the background, so there's a lot of shit here that's, like, not related to the exploit. Wait, did he say 5? Uh, he said there was one that ran yeah. CPU 5, yeah. So then the, um, the CPU pinning strategy is kinda dismissed, right? Uh, the, the theory about pinning CPUs. I mean, it, it might still pin CPUs, um, but it's... But we've seen it on, on 0, on 1, on 5, and on 7. Right. I mean, what I'm saying is that the allocation isn't CPU exclusive. Yeah, that's what I would say. Like, I think there, there could still be per CPU, but it's not all happening on CPU 1, like I thought. Um, there is allocations happening on CPU 7, which should be WebKit, I think. Um, oh, actually, as a matter look of fact, at this. Were we, uh, what are you pointing to? Hold on, I will go to you. Packet 1 is 37100B.
that means that this page actually did successful get reclaimed. Mm, I think can you can you walk me through that a little bit? I'm following you, so you can go around in VS Code to demonstrate if you want. So, I mean, okay, so you can see what I see. Yep. If I switch windows. Yep, we can. Okay. Basically, at the very end, like the debug spray, what it does is, um, or maybe we go back a bit more. Basically, when we do all the freeze and then call the uh, garbage collector, and then we reallocate the pipes, right? So at this point, ideally, we want to have like that uh, mbuff pointer points into a page which is used by the pipes. But in case this does not happen, I then, for debugging purposes, spray more um, mbuffs to reallocate that, which means if we don't succeed here, then we spray packets with A, B, C and look at what we received. So in the log we can see we have A, 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 which is one of the debug packets here. So that means the page didn't get reclaimed. But here we have 37100B, which is not one of these, um, which means one of two things. Either something raised us in between here and did spray an mbuff with that specific content, or the page actually did get reclaimed, although not by our pipe buffers. And there's something else. So it would be interesting to know what lies here. I think the race angle is more likely. Um, it's like, because there's so many M buffs that are being like that are coming into play when we're spraying this. Like we're seeing them from other CPUs too, which are outside of WebKit. Um, I think the best way to narrow it down would be maybe to run it again and see if we see the same behavior. Like, because if it's a race, it shouldn't be repro like super reproducible, right? Whereas if we're forcing the reclaiming, that's probably more reproducible. I would rather try to debug um, kind of the, like to analyze the freeing things. Like for example, what is like the, the data? We still haven't really figured out why exactly we're not getting the data we are expecting. Yeah, so those are all on CPU 7, which means they should be WebKit related. Um, but it's like... Yeah, like, MH data should be pointing to, uh, like, your UDP packet data, for example. Like, I'm not sure why it's not. I'm just going to see if I can do a free text search to see if there's a comment that says... Yeah, so m data is set to m header dot mh data. Uh, this is used. I'm not sure what that was. That was weird. Um, m and that's data. a macro though. It's a macro, yeah, but it's it's a macro that's used quite a lot. Um, like for example, let's go to like ip icmp m data. Is that not what it was? Oh, M underscore data, my bad. Yeah, so you can see, like, it sets it up so that it's after the header. Um, so I don't know, like, why that's wrong. It should be correct. Do we want to maybe dump the full 256 bits or bytes of the M buff? Um, it yeah, will be, I think that might be. It will be wild as hell. Our log is gonna be fucked, but um, I mean we can we can try it, you know. So, yeah, let me let me get off you here real quick. Um, 
you don't happen to have the address of uh, S N printf or S printf. Let me check. All right. I mean, I might have it. Printf. Damn VMware. No, I don't. Although Mira might. Wait, I I just saw it in your uh in your disassembler thingy. Where? What? Yeah. Uh, we had SN printf, I think, it... I think, right? So that could work, yeah. SN printf. Is I that have. not what I was looking for? Uh you were looking for sprintf, but SN printf is basically the same thing, just it takes a uh No, I was size. looking for SN printf. Oh, I thought you said sprintf. Okay, my bad then. That was the case. Whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. SN printf is better. The more secure version, we gotta make sure our uh, exploit hacky hooks are secure. Yeah. What are you trying? I see you doing something with. M, M buff data dump. Can't you just run exec DE almost... bin bash? <laughs> what about Ghidra, by the way? Everyone's still using Ida. Ghidra's really bad for PS4 stuff. I do use Ghidra currently. Yeah, Ghi Although this is only because I didn't transfer the uh, Hopper license to this user account. Uh, Ghidra is really bad on PS4 kernel. And when I say bad, I mean really, really bad. It's unusable. No, I mean, for me, it is usable. With PS4 kernel? Yeah. Uh, you must have got lucky or something then. <laughs> Last time I used it, um, probably at least half the code didn't even get disassembled because it just detected no returns everywhere. Um, it just said you left the collaborative session, by the way. Are you still with me? Uh, Yeah, I'm actually coding. Oh, okay. That's weird that it said you disconnected then. Um, huh. We're going to get desynced here. Let's say. Uh, I don't know if the collaboration link has changed. I'll just send it to you again. No, it hasn't changed. <clears throat> I'm like 90% sure you didn't hit 130 beeps yet, right? No, I haven't hit 130, I don't think. I will double check that for you, but no, we hit 122. We're pretty low. Because we're mostly like trying to work out things. Uh, without doing too much testing. He left because you insulted Gitra. <laughs> I must say the badges are extremely cool for the predictions on Twitch. Um, did you... No, you haven't rejoined the VS Code session yet. Not yet, because I just want to finish coding and I'll send it to you in Discord. Okay, fair enough. I'll continue with chat. I mean... I don't want to I... overwrite anything or change anything while you're... I... Yeah, you, you probably want to, like, check what I did there. Alright. Um Interesting. My twi the the Twitch stream also died for me, but I can still hear you on Discord. Uh you must have Yeah, must have had like a internet drop or something, but not severe enough to cut you out of Discord or something. Alright, let me I will copy that function over entirely. Um and we'll look at it on stream. 
Okay, so mbuff data dump uh, plus i times 2. Uh, uh, I'm unable to get the stream working. Oh, actually, now it works. And I have this crazy Adobe ad. I think that makes sense. Plus i times 2 because you're doing the two character print. Um, and then you're, yep, you're doing percent s. Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. Yeah. We'll try to compile it to see if there's any errors, but uh, we have some warnings. Implicit declaration of SN printf. Oh, yeah, that's right. We do have to bring that over. Yeah, you need to add that. Uh, SN printf, star star no format, um, size t length, and then dot dot dot, right? Do I have that right? SN printf. Yeah, I think that's right. And uh, that's gonna. Be... Oh, actually, there's. Star. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, now I just gotta get this. Does Visual Studio work again? I fixed the yes. Oh, okay, yep. now I see some of your. Yep, you were back. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. We need to add this thing. No, what is happening? Wait, what? What are you doing? Oh, I'm following you. Oh, you're set to me? Yeah, okay. Do you see the fix? The SM print F size of minus I times 2? One sec. 436350. Four, three, three, okay, sorry, on unhooking, what were you talking about? Uh, see size the of I times. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. Trying to make sure that the session is working. Yep, should be good. Um, we will see if I'm able to install the hook without uh, anything blowing up. Hopefully we are, but where MBOP is being used so much, it's totally possible this ship blows up. Oh, actually, we ran your exploit, didn't we? So we'll, pro we'll probably have to reboot. Oh, what's the kernel panic on the exploit, though, this time? That will be interesting to see. Uh, let's find out. Ah, uh, the SP flush internal. The normal one. The SP flush internal? Did it not? There we go. It took a while for the PS4 to turn off. These pro tips are fake. They are not fake news. It's real news, okay? Take all the pro tips that are in chat and take them to heart. Apply them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, make sure to apply them to someone else's code, though. <laughs> Track your commits using blockchain. This is a really good idea. I mean, it. You know, for those who don't know, it's so easy to fake commits. You can fake commit dates, you can remove commits, but if they're in the blockchain, then that can't happen. So, ultimately, I think everyone should be using blockchain for commits. And we can have proof-of-work-based validation on that blockchain so people can mine GitHub commits. commits. It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a million-dollar idea. It hasn't been tried by, like, a thousand other shitcoins yet. Nice, even less GPUs. <laughs> Just wait a few months when Ethereum mining is gone because EIP-1559 comes along and the difficulty is like 600 terahashes or something. Just watch, the GPU market is going to get flooded with shit. Probably like RX 570s are just going to be laying on the ground, people stepping over them. Fuck Ethereum. I actually juice. wanted to build a PC 
but then I realized none of the parts I want are like shippable. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because last year, uh, for a good chunk of the year, power supplies were like the hardest thing to get. Now, uh, power supplies are the easiest part to get. Um, you can get pretty much anything for your computer except for a CPU and a GPU. <laughs> the two things that actually make yeah. it work. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you again. All right, let's run some Mira. Thank you. Why would anyone want a GPU? Intel HD graphics pass. Intel's integrated graphics are like pretty interesting though, with like how they, they are pretty good considering. Um I think our hook and stuff. Depending on what you want to do. Yeah. This is interesting. Um Do we fuck up? Oh yeah, we didn't. Do it for the child. Ah, oh, yeah, we didn't. Shit. Okay, we'll reinstall the payload and hope shit doesn't go bad. Um, did you add it already? Oh wait, actually, yeah, I think I did. Okay. Yeah, looks like it. All right, let's try that again. One thing that's interesting here, I just noticed. Maybe it's just because of the mangling. Okay, it's just because of the mangling. Oh wait, there's some some of them zero. Like some of them is empty. Did we? That should not be the case. I think we fucked up. Yeah, you're right. There shouldn't be any empty ones. I'm just trying to. Th hmm. Why is there empty ones? You're not printing any new lines, or... No. Oh, we don't have mem set. But even that shouldn't really be necessary, I don't think. I'm not sure about the SM printf, though. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at it here really quick. Uh, you're doing an M buff data down plus I times two, which makes sense. You're doing it for a size of. Yep, that makes sense. MH data I. It looks fine to me. But you're right, we shouldn't be getting any empty strings. Oh, unless actually, um, I'm trying to think, does the present O2X specifier not print null bytes? Or does it? It does. Because that definitely does. Wait, SN print F, that's not. How it works. It should be buff. Ah, shit, you're right, yeah. I had a bad prototype. It should be uh, buff and then format string. Yeah, it should be what you have there. So it should be... Uh, well, you're editing it, so I'll let you finish editing that. Um, yeah. Is that correct? It's char length format. Uh, var args char length. Yep, that's correct. I don't know how I forgot that argument. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, good catch. I don't know how the how the fuck you forgot that. Yeah, that's probably it. So let's. Uh... Oh, do we call it right though? It'll check. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep, that was my fuck up. Okay. Um. Oh. 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 Actually. 
this is wait wait that's maybe wrong what's uh oh yep. the format stream yeah it has to be in kernel space right now it's in user space yep how does it not blow up i don't know actually i had the same thought when i had the same bug That's good. Uh, we should be able to hopefully repatch over. So let's do that really quick. Like, see how everything gets released as soon as I enter the browser? It's really weird. Oh, no. No, no. Okay. Good, good. That WSL died on me again. Ah, uh, yeah, it panicked, I think. Didn't it? Yeah. I don't know what the panic is, but it did panic. Um, that might just be because we were trying to patch over. Uh, it actually seems... Yeah, likely. it's probably... I don't think it's actually... A mistake. Do you actually... Do you do, like, unpatching properly? I don't unpatch before repatching, no. So th there might be, like, a race Yeah, so or that's the issue, then. Um, what do you mean? No, like, if you, like, change the instructions and then you change them again... Like, it probably can't double patch the way you're doing it. Because if you don't unpatch, and then with the second patch, you copy the patched bytes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the trampoline gets fucked up when it tries to create a new one. Yeah. So basically, the trampoline is the trampoline to the old thing. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. We keep exploits in a document DB around here. No SQL is the way. For sure. Um, I think after this, maybe, uh, once we try to confirm uh, the data, maybe we'll look at the, the flows link. Do you want to do that, maybe? Okay, yeah. So the bug description says these bugs are only reachable through the loopback interface. How are you triggering it? Uh, we're we're sending to loopback. We're binding to uh, the loopback interface on you or on a raw socket. Sorry. So, yep, we can send to loopback. I don't know why the PS4 lets us bind to loopback. I don't know why it lets us use raw sockets. It just does. This bug was very easily present, uh, preventable if uh, Sony like did things in a sane way, but they don't. Just like everything else on the console. Are you thinking of posting this code somewhere? There is the repo. Um, I try to keep it updated, but I'm not awesome with that, in all honesty. It's, it's one of those things that sometimes does get forgotten about on my end, so... Do you cut me some slack? Talking if about we. Oh, we crashed on the. Uh... Talking. Talking about what, sir? On the on the patch or what? Uh. Anyways, talk talking about weird like game console designs that reminds me of the one story, I, I think I read somewhere about like the. It should be like Xbox 360 or something, which had a very weird um, instruction, basically, which would let you bypass level two cache coherency. Something like that. So it, I think, would like store or prefetch or something, either way, and it would bypass and break 
cache coherency and they were like, well, they're game developers, they know what they're doing and they need this kind of access and shit like that. So this actually turned out to be incredibly bad because the CPU had speculative execution and like whenever the branch predictor would speculatively execute some code and it would branch to that instruction, it would speculatively do like a, a cache fetch bypassing the uh, like a memory fetch bypassing the cache or something like that. Um, and like it it wouldn't like unroll the, the cache fetch because speculative executed cache fetch is the same as like a real executed cache fetch because those things are rolled back. So basically what the developers observed is that the game would crash and they couldn't figure out what it was because they were looking at memory dumps and the memory there was correct. But the real issue was that it wasn't correct in the cache. So it turned out if the pro if the program had this instruction in the address space at all, chances are that this speculative, uh, like the branch predictor would hit that. Um, so you couldn't have the instruction at all in the binary or else it might be hit speculatively and fuck up everything. It sounds like such a nightmare for like the people who worked at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun to think about. It was a pretty interesting read. It was some blog post or something. Did you panic again? I think we did. Um... System pros, yeah. This wasn't even on the uh, payload, by the way, like the hook payload. This was just an uh, unfortunate byproduct of the exploit. We got a bit unlucky. Oh, exploit, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, the, the, the pro tip we just got was related to Microsoft when we were talking about Microsoft and Xbox. Proud if you spend over one thousand dollar in the Microsoft Store, we send a private copy of the Windows source code. Wait, isn't the Windows source code public anyways? <laughs> Depending on who you ask. I, I mean, it's it's public if you're uh, <laughs> if you're going for shady repos. Yeah. Although I think it's old. I think it's pretty old at this point. Like, when was the last Windows True. source leak? Like, two thousand. It was before 2010, right? I think it's been at least no, 10 years. No, wasn't there like a, a very, very recent Windows XP leak? Oh, there might have been an XP leak, yeah. Yeah, that was, I think that was last year. But like, I don't think there's any like leak source code of anything after like XP and 03. Like, I don't think Vista or 7 or 10 leaked, unless I'm mistaken. Which is fine, because XP is the last good one. I mean, actually, 7 was good. 7 was good, I agree. It was built off the back of Garbage, uh, being Vista, but 7 was good. <laughs> Linux has also leaked on GitHub. Yeah, that Linus Torvalds guy is quite a leaker, man. Um, I, think the, I think the authorities <laughs> are still after him. Want to write your own operating system? It is actually something I started and just never finished. Um, I do want to. Oh, really? I do want to do my like Me my own full OS. I think it'd be fun, and I think I'd learn a lot doing it. Me too, actually. You can you can join my project. Uh, can we write it in Rust so that it's secure? No, that was a joke. I I, mean, I, I, I never want to touch Rust. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you could. So the idea is to make it modular, and you could compile the modules in Rust. Um, I think some people have been doing that with Linux kernel. Actually, they've been compiling some Linux kernel modules in Rust, and it and it works. Um, it requires some hacks, but um, you can make it work. I mean, I'm not really too familiar with the Rust, but I feel like if you do too much low-level thing, then at some point you have to use a bunch of unsafe stuff. Exactly. Which kind of defeats the purpose of being like memory safe. It's like, sure, you can write it in Rust, but like if every statement is unsafe code, what's the point? 
Oh, there's some dumps. It's so much data. Oh, there's... Four one, four one. Dude, what? Whoa, where did these come from? We haven't even ran your shit yet. <laughs> where are these coming from? Huh. That is so weird. I think we should mostly... Dude, what the... Because that's A, B, C, right? Or, or no, it's A's and C's, I guess. I don't know where those are coming from. That's strange. Uh, unsafe is necessary, needing to declare it as a net positive IMO. I mean, yeah, that's the thing I was going to bring up is, at least with unsafe, even though you do have to use it, it does kind of throw up a red flag in the source code, like, hey, this is, if there's a bug, it's probably here kind of thing. Um, but Rust is so annoying to write. It takes so much longer because it, it fights you, basically, when you write it, which, if you like that, I mean... <laughs> I guess I guess Sounds people support, like right? there's people who like drilling into their own heads. So, <laughs> I mean that's what I'd compare writing Rust to. Um, so I will rerun the server with your uh, code, which means I will need to quickly go back and restart it. Oh, one thing about the US though, we're gonna write it for ARM, and we will never support x86. I'm actually okay with that. Um, I want to get more familiar with ARM. So. Okay. Are you ready for the log to just... Oh, man. The backlog is not going to be readable, I don't think. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of shit that gets lost, probably. You can already tell, by the way, with how big our prints are, the, the loading of the browser is taking so much longer, printing out all the shit. Um, performance is just absolutely tanked right now. The, the page still hasn't loaded. By now it would have loaded like twice over before we had the, the full dumping going on. There are a lot of freeze for the uh, CPU 7 though. Yeah, uh, well, that's that's WebKit when it loads in. It's, it's clearing up shit. I don't know what it's clearing up, but it's clearing up something. All right, we got your uh, alert, so let's go ahead and run it. Oh, you didn't even run the... <laughs> what? I thought you were in the exploit already. No, that was just loading the exploit page. Now we're in the exploit. Can you change the color to green? Uh, Maybe somewhere. That might be no. like a VS Code setting, but I'm not going to do that. We don't need to read the matrix today. We'll leave that for another day. Um, I am sorry, by the way, for it. It might look kind of bad on stream. I do try to keep the bit rate a little bit low at 3,500 so that it's like more accessible to everyone. Because usually there's not a lot of movement. Like I'm not playing a game or something, but um, with that low bit rate, with how much shit is being put in the log, it, it probably does get pixely. So, uh, what are you trying to exploit? Uh, we're we're trying out Team Star's uh, IP6 exploit. Let's see if it'll. Work. Or if we can observe some interesting behavior. Right there. Yeah, it actually, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. I'm just checking out the stream and it's, it's not as fuzzy as I thought it would be. So that's good. That is one thing that's going to be annoying, by the way, is all this jumbling shit, because Sony doesn't lock their prints, so. Okay, I do see some data in there, though. Can you play the Matrix theme Sometimes. while it's running? Honestly, I would like to, <laughs> but I feel like it's uh, not worth the risk, because uh, Twitch, the DMCA stuff around Twitch has gotten super aggressive. Uh, they have automated shit running on it now. So Warner Brothers would probably not be very happy with our stream if we did that. Would be fun to do, though, but just can't do that kind of shit on Twitch anymore. But if it was a year ago. But... I used to put on some Spotify music when I was doing the exploit streams, and that was nice to be able to do. Can't do that anymore. 
so some of the M buffs have like um a lot of data in them. Some of them are like full to the end with like non null bytes, yeah. Oh, there's like three seven one zero zero seven. We have like the the non packets. Can you copy the lock to the file? Uh, you want me to do it now? Okay. Yeah, it's done. Wait, it's done? I didn't even see that shit. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I was looking for it and I didn't see it. Okay, I don't know how much is actually going to be here. There should probably, or, uh, like... Yeah, there we Let go. Let the Python script write it to file. Uh, I could modify it to do that, yeah. Or I could just use the uh, the T command, too. Maybe. But yeah, do you see this one? Again, we can see that uh, maybe the reclaim worked. Yeah, it happened on both of them this time, not just the one as well. Which is interesting, I think. So, so where where do you spray? Like, what data do you spray? Like, what what are we looking for in the M buffs? I mean, this is a good question, actually. I see, like, you have one five one, and then four one. Yeah, five one five one. And you have two six one. So what I what I do want to see in there is the nine one nine one. Yeah, can we find that? Uh, it's no. not in the log, but this is a really cut down log because of all the the buffer is limited. So, um. Yeah, I think we will modify that script. Um, for some reason, I can't actually stop it. I don't know why the control C isn't going through. It's really annoying. I might have to kill it in Task Manager or something. Um, I'm actually trying to find where is the Python file for that that I'm running. I think it was test.py is what I called it, but I don't see it in here. Maybe I have it in a deeper subdirectory. No. Where did the script go? Oh, I think it's I think it's in backups. It's the uh comread dot uh, UI script, I think. Right, this is it. Yeah, okay. So I think up here we'll do a F equals open uh klog.txt do it as an append oh that's super equals and then here we'll do uh f dot right data yeah there's really not a lot in these logs okay this should open up a klog.txt file and this should write it every time it gets data although that might be like mm, will that kill performance of the reading I don't know. We'll try it. If it's a problem, then we'll fix it. I don't want to do any premature optimization. That's Z's cardinal sin. Um, I think I'm going to have to kill this, though. And create a new terminal. I don't really see any useful data. Or do I? What? I know I had it in here. Okay. Oh. Uh, 
This is a problem. Did Com three get Com three? Locked? Oh, actually, wait. No, I remember now. WSL can't actually access Com three. It's a permission thing. So I w I was running it in Windows actually. Yeah. Okay. Although, okay, the system is entirely frozen. The PlayStation, or? Yeah, the PlayStation. And it's actually, I don't know what's going on with the serial. I'm getting a bunch of shit not working properly. Is this not the right file? Um, this is exhibiting the behavior that I had that was a problem. I thought I had a... Maybe it wasn't in the backup. I don't know what the hell happened to my file for reading the... Yeah, this is not it. Oh, boy. Oh, I think VS Code's gonna crash. I can't do anything, it's frozen entirely. Shit is not working. Everything's blowing up. This is actually really pissing me off that I can't find this uh, thing I had for reading UART. Where the fuck did it go? Uh, okay. I guess we'll close it then. Okay. Closed. And everything got lost in my setup. That's so annoying. I will send you another invite link. Ah, okay. Um, I still can't find the file I use for like. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that file I had for reading UART. It, it vanished somewhere. I don't know where. Really sucks because that was a useful script I was running and I don't, I don't know what happened to it. That was useful for sharing with uh, sharing the log. Why does this one not work? I don't know. This one, it just, it keeps printing a bunch of bullshit that isn't actually there, and it just keeps printing, like, a bunch of spaces. I don't know why it, like, what it's doing. Um. Oh, oh, I think, yeah, I remember. Yeah, this one, I had a working script somewhere, and I'm pretty sure it was called test.py, but I can't find it anywhere now. That's a good good way to name it. it it was yeah i planned to rename it and i just never did <laughs> <laughs> um um let's see if i can find it again UART.py. Let's try it really quick. I'm pretty sure I used the serial library. I did um, for s equals serial dot serial. Yep. Uh, this would be com three, and this would be one fifteen two hundred, and this was. Uh, while through yeah 10,000 is probably reasonable and I think we did something like this so then I can just copy this over
Hopefully that works. Python URTWI. Let's see if it works. Okay, well. Uh, Argument must be stream. Oh, fucking Python 3. Oh, why do you it's... want to append, though? I mean, we could do a write. It's chewy, it's chewy. Actually, yeah, append is what we want. Yeah, right, because... binary. Well, then it'll overwrite every time the loop iterates. It's not going to append. It's going to it's going to overwrite. Not the loop, though. Every time you open the file. Oh boy, this is this is nice. I like I like that. I forgot Python three changed it to work like that. You know what? Ten twenty four is reasonable. Let's do a 1024 buffer. I it's gonna have the B whatever's, but Okay. I think the system is rebooted at least. Um I did miss a beep or two. I actually don't have the beep bot running right now because that got destroyed when BS crashed. I might just forego uh updating that for the present because I only want to run one more test and then I want to look at the, the the flow stuff, so I don't want to go through all the setup of, of getting that back up and running. I will recover the count, though, for future streams and pick up from there. Maybe the code on GitHub? Can you no, rerun the UART? Um, I do have it running. Or you want me to rerun it? Can re you rerun it? I can, yeah. Oh, you made it so it takes away the B shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we I go. tried to. Did it work? Yep, it, I think so. It's hard to tell where... Oh, no, no, it didn't work. It's still there. I see it. Yeah, it's just Python 3 things. Uh, I'm not super concerned about it. But... Python 3... Removes the... Bytes to string. Oh, right. I, I remember this now. You gotta encode it. To UTF-8. Actually, you gotta decode it, though. Uh, we're back to the shit where it won't recognize control Cs. Alright. Oh, now it did. Oh, there it is. Alright. Oh, yeah. No. There we go. Um, N twenty four isn't a great buffer size, so I'm gonna change it. Uh, let's change it to like thirty two bytes because I am waiting for data, and we will get data cut off with that small of a buffer. Wait, what? Where we were buffering on 1024 bytes, um, there was shit getting cut off. I don't remember how I did oh, this before. Oh, I see. I, I, I fuck it. This will work. I'm tired of trying to fuck around with shit. A VS Code really fucked me there, like when it crashed. Um, I guess my fake DNS server is also not running anymore. So, oh, the server isn't running because that was run under VS Code too. Um. <sighs> okay. Why don't you use Nando? Nando doesn't crash. Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, if I was using Nano, we wouldn't be in this situation. Okay, we will run our uh, our payloads. Um, the log is not great to look at because... Wait, what? Oh, it's still running yours. This didn't change. I gotta run server.py back to uh, serve Mira. Is there threading in Python? Yep. It's kind of weird though how it works. Like I don't think it's I don't think it's like real threading or whatever. It's like a weird like wrapper thing. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I used the threading in Python. I should probably just code something and see. Okay. I don't know why that happened. And Okay, yeah. Um, our, our hook payload is running. I will run your thing now. Um, this looks really shitty, though. It's pretty impossible to actually read, but hopefully in the actual file it's better. Uh, so in the server, we gotta switch that back to that and restart the server, and we should be good. Oh shit, we might actually have a problem with the way we're doing files shit at the moment because uh, yeah, we don't I think close we need it. To flush. Well, we don't flush or close it, so it's never actually. I don't think. Maybe it will. Did you already run the exploit? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it gets written. Actually, no, the page is still loading because oh. the performance is so shit, so no corruption has happened yet. So we can change it. Uh, .py. Oh, you flush it now? Okay, good. Let's check that it's actually get, getting uh, ran, though. It should be writing to klog.txt. Okay, looks like it is. Okay, this page okay, is going to yeah, take a that, long time to load. Works. So. Okay, that is much better. This is probably bombarding the shit out of my hard drive. <laughs> if I look at the hard drive and... <laughs> ah, that's fine. Probably. How much RAM do you have? Uh, I have 64 gigs of RAM, but I'm using like 33 or something right now, so we'll see. We'll see if we blue screen. Good enough. No, I mean, it's gonna, gonna be like a RAM first, so it's gonna be dirty pages. Okay, I will try to look for when your exploit ends, but you might have to let me know. What is going on? Why is the log so quiet? Is it, was it this quiet before? Could it be the last PS4 stream? It won't be the last PS4 stream. It'll be the last scheduled one, though. Um, I will get to that a bit later on. Talk about towards the end of the stream. Basically, I'm going to be doing... Over the next week, I'm probably going to be doing more impromptu streams with PS4 stuff. Oh, this is kind of cool, the way that pattern went. <laughs> it's like a DNA strand or something. Hell Yeah. How did you connect PS4 and a PC to listen to port? Uh, it's uh, serial. So you solder to the uh, transmit and receive 
uh, UART pads on the on the PS4 motherboard, um, and then you patch the system to let that actually get enabled. Um, and then you can just run a serial to USB TTY converter, like breakout board, and uh, and read the kernel log over USB. USB slash serial, I guess. Just make sure when you solder to the ads, it's a good solder, because once you enable UART, if it can't actually send data, well, we actually never worked, we never figured this out exactly. I didn't know if it's either if it can't send data or if it receives bad data, like from noise, um, it will cause the PS4 to not boot. But we never actually figured out exactly what caused that. I think we reached the end. Okay. So we should be able to open klog.txt and it should be in there. We have reached the end. Oh, but we didn't get the reclaim. Because you have the A's and C's in the packet one and two. Yeah, what I'm interested in looking at the log. The log isn't too bad, actually, this time. So you were looking for nine ones, right? Yeah. Honestly, I don't see any of the data I'm spraying in any of the M buffs being freed. I don't either. I saw one nine one, which is, there, but, it's, but it's not what we're looking for. Which is weird because um, we definitely do free M buffs. Are we maybe not calling this function? Not what's the function we're hooking? Uh, we're we're hooking M free M. Is that being called when an M buff is freed? Um, it's it's called when an M buff chain is freed. Sorry, I did the say all that. Free an entire chain of M buffs and associated external buffers. Let me. Th is this what's called in the M pull up? Macro and pull up. So we are or hooking function, M free. Yeah. M. Yeah. But, oh, wait. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, it might be calling it's M free M. One, right? You're M free, not M free M. That might be why. They are different. How does this differ from M free M? Uh, one fifty seven. Oh right, okay. So M free M takes a parent M buff, and then it uh, it'll call M free on it recursively, or not recursively, but it'll iterate over the entire linked list of that chain and free all of them. So. The thing is with M free is usually the way it works is it'll free uh, the M buff and it'll return the next M buff. Um, I thought this was only called by M free M, but I think M pull up can call it as well. So it's possible that we need to hook this and not the M uh, M free M. Where are we doing the hooking again? Is it in hooking dot C? Uh, that's the actual hook Ooh. implementation. Uh, where it's being hooked is in main.c. Um, the target offset. So basically, all we'd need to do is change the target offset from m free m to m free. I think. PS four hook source. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong file. Like, VMware is being so weird. Oh, oh, and we need to change the hook, though. Okay, now I remember why I hooked this function, actually. 
What a pain in the ass. You see the problem? Why on stream? Though? No. Okay. M3 is in line. Do you have the offset for me? I, I can give you an offset. So in the source code, that function, uh, it, it's basically a wrapper that does a while loop and calls M free on the parent M buff and just keeps going through that until MB is null. But if you look at uh, the offset I sent you in Ida, you will see that M free is inline. So we can't just hook M free and uh, call it a day. We're going to have to hook the m pull up function directly. Which. Wait, isn't m pull up a macro? It's a. No, it is a function, but I think it is in line too. Oh, God damn it. Let me just check if it's in 1.76 kernel. If it's not, then it's probably in line. Okay, in 1.76 kernel, it's actually not in line. So maybe we can, maybe this won't be so bad to hook after all. The only, uh, yeah, we're going to have to find the best hook location, but first we have to find it on 5.05. .05. All right, so where is this function on 5.05? .05? Is there any indicators that are easy to follow? I don't see any. This, yeah, that's going to be used by a lot of things. Where is M3 defined? M3 is not defined because it's in line. Oh, do you mean in the source? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, in the source, oh, it's okay, in. Yeah. I see it. How do you know when something is inlined? Yeah, it's just a. Uh, I can see it in the function where it's it would be a call in the source code is not in the in the uh disassembly. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to go through Xrefs, I think, to get to this because it's oh boy, that's not good either. Strings. For those watching, uh, basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to find an easy way to find this on 5.05 .05 because I don't have it. I'm pretty sure I will double check that I don't have it. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for a oh, function shit. that calls There's it that uses a like a string or something. Reference. There's a lot what of. What are you uh, trying actions. to do? I'm I'm trying to find m pull up. Which what I'm trying to do there is just find any function that calls it that has a like a a string or something so that I can easily find it. Um, but m pull up is inline, isn't it? On one point seven six, it's not actually. So. It might not be on uh, 5.05 .05 either. I'm not totally certain. I found a function that might be easier to identify. This IGMP input. I don't think I would have that native already, but I don't. Maybe I can easily find this though. Is there any strings? A function like this would normally have at least one string somewhere. But it's not looking like I'm getting any such luck here. Okay, is it? No, there's no xrefs to it, so. Yeah, this one might be a bust as well, because I am not going to be able to easily. Find how it. how is it called? M pull up. M underscore pull up. Yeah. IP fast forward, does this have anything maybe? God damn it. 
I can't believe I haven't found any strings yet. I might have to go top down on like one of these input functions. That's the six I think I have. No, I don't. I CMP. If that was ARM, I could just use my offset finder code. Gotta hate, gotta love x86 rather. Dude, I don't have any of these functions labeled. <laughs> okay, this is going to be trickier than I thought to find. I was hoping this would take like two minutes. Ah, uh, we'll figure it out. Dude, I, I can't believe there's like no strings anywhere, though, to use. It's so unlucky. Most functions I look at in the kernel have a string in them, but not these ones. Not the ones I actually need to have a string in them. There's one character of xref strings or whatever, but... I would use something like Diaphora to do this shit, but I've tried Diaphora on PS4 kernel before and it's not good. It gets more things wrong than it does get right. Bindiff? Yeah, I've tried Bindiff as well. It doesn't really work, either. Too many false positives. Okay, this might be an option. IP strip options? Maybe this will do something interesting. That I can search for. Or not. It's cool, too. Finally, a string. Jesus Christ, I was about to lose my mind. Okay, so this is UDP input, which means... This is in pull up. Does this look like oh, there's literally a string saying M pull up? Sorry, one sec. <clears throat> Inside of the M pull up function? I didn't see one on 1.76. No, but for referencing it. Oh, I didn't see any when I was looking around. Oh, this looks complex. Yeah, a lot of the networking stack, the functions are huge. I found it, though. Uh, it looks quite different uh, between 5.5 and 1.76, but that just might be a... Like, that might be standard. It might not be actually modified that much. It just might be the way that Ida parsed it. But anyway, I found M pull up. Um, the next thing is finding the point that we want to hook at. Can you send me the offset for M pull up? Yep. All right. So ideally where we want to hook probably is like... Uh, 
Uh, I think we want to hook here, line 1050. That's where the... Is that the right one? Let me try to think this through for a second. Um, you also use Binary Ninja? Yeah, I do. Um, the only reason I don't use it for the PS4 stuff, the only reason I'm using Ida is because I don't have the 1.76 ELF, I just have the i64 database. So I can't actually open it in Binary Ninja, which, which is a problem because 1.76 is where uh, I get a lot of symbols from. So You can nop it? Nop what? How does a noob learn Ida stuff? I want to get into reversing sometime. Um, I mean, Ida, like, there's guides on how to use Ida, but really Ida is just a disassembler. For learning assembly, I mean that the go-to resource for Z and I to recommend is uh, open security training. Intro to x86-64. Um, this is actually being rehauled, uh, overhauled actually. Um, Neo Kova is doing a 2.0 version of this course, which he's aiming to drop for the end of the year, I think, is what he said. But I mean, even the V1 of this course is, is still, like, great. So, if you want to learn assembly, that's where, you, that's where I think you'd go. Did you know Open Security Drain? Yeah, they are doing it, too. Um, we actually covered on the podcast, he's looking for beta testers for that. Um, I don't know if all the spots are filled up by now. I, they might be, because it's been, like, a week now. But um, he was looking for people in, like, three different categories. Uh, where do we want to hook? Are we hooking this one, or are we hooking this yeah. one? I'm trying to remember. I... How much uh, bytes does your trampoline use? It needs to be at least hex A bytes, or 11 bytes, or sorry, 10 bytes. 11. Yeah, it needs to be uh, at least 10 bytes, because that's how large the hook is, the hook uh, opcodes. Okay, yeah. Let me see. Well, we can hook at this offset. Some Fs might be missing. <laughs> Just a few. It's Ghidra. Um, one sec. Moff EAX, what is that? R12? So R12 is our M. Okay, sorry. Well, uh, what was that? I, I just had to step away for a second. R12 is the M buff. Okay, so we were looking at uh, 290, this one here. No, the one. 
higher. 290, yeah. Oh, uh, stream's a bit off, but yeah, I'm behind. Yeah, no worries. So R12 is what we want to print the data of, yeah? Yeah, R12 is the pointer to the mbuff. Okay. Um. Which is pretty much where the M3 function starts. Sorry, I'm just the, this hook. This hook location isn't going to work. It's not big enough. Why not? Um, One, two, it's nine, three, it's nine bytes. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can do the test too. Or yeah, sorry, the the test will work. Okay, but the other problem here with this location is we need the value inside of our twelve. And, what do you mean we need it? Uh, we need our 12. The way the hooks work, uh, we can make it work. We'll just have to add something in the hook to Wait, grab just... the value of our 12. That's all. But we can do that with an inline assembly snippet. All right. So we'll make it target. Wait, what? We don't. Isn't the... You're injecting a jump, R. I'm injecting a don't jump. You? Yeah. But um, the way that I access, like, I, I can access RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, and R9 immediately through the arguments. I can't do that for R12. So we'll just have to add a, a snippet to pull out the R12 value, that's all. So that's that CA290. Oh, we can do inline assembly in our hook. Yeah, exactly. So CA290. Um, I'll just keep it as M3M print for now. Uh, and then in hooking.c, we need to make this... Uh, grab. It went sixty. Uh, yeah, we'll make it grab it like that. M buff. PR. So actually, yeah. Like that. Uh, you need to. After you're done with that, you need to make sure that um, the compiler doesn't trash R12 before we use it. Mm, yeah, that's true. I'm just trying to think of if it will. But we'll have to check that in Binary Ninja, I guess. I'm going to comment this out because we don't have a chain pointer anymore. We'll just check it. mbuff ptr zero. But then we will do basically what this did. Um, mbuff ptr. I think that's good, right? What does safe registers do? Um, if you look in hooking.h, uh, it just pushes the previous register values on the stack, and then restore at the end will pop them all back in. That way, any registers we corrupt in our hook will be restored when it goes back to uh, the function. Or at least that's what it hopes to do. In theory, there's one or two registers that get smashed by the hooking code itself that do not get restored, but I try to use which ones? Um RAX and R10 get destroyed by my hooking code. RAX and R10, is that fine to smash? I th I think so. Usually they are, in most cases. RAX so when returning, we need to set RAX to a specific value. Uh, 
Uh, for the hook routines, yeah. I always set them to 1337 for the size check. No, I'm saying when you jump, like when we put the trampoline and then origin, uh, execute the original code. How does the jump back work? Is it like a literal x86 jump? Basically, with a trampoline, yeah. So then, after you execute the original snippets, it doesn't like, because we need to set RAX to specific value, otherwise the kernel will panic here. Uh, no, it won't. Because that will get executed in the trampoline. As long as R12 okay. is intact, that should be fine. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this looks all good, I think. We can go ahead and compile that. I do not even remember what the state of our system is in. I might have to reboot it. Oh, there's an issue. 231, that's a problem. What is 231's pro? Oh, this. Okay, there we go. Um, is our system in a crash state? I think it is because I think we ran your POC last. I think so. Yep, the system. Can you, can you check? Can you check on the decompiler whether R12 is in a good state when we actually read it? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um. Yep, it should be in a good state. It's not tainted at all when it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah, because this is doing the inline assembly snippet. Yep, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what's going on in chat. Uh, we need to chill out a little bit, because... Uh... Z's probably not having a super fun time. I don't know if there's a full moon or something today, but let's try to chill out a little bit and chat. No need to throw insults around or anything like that. Uh, what the... F uh, wait, what? My terminal disappeared. What? No more terminal for you. It's still running though. <laughs> Where'd it go? It's just gone. I mean, if it's running, I don't really mind. I can still access the file, but. Uh, go probably on like view and then give me back my terminal option. There we go. No panel. I don't know what happened there. I must have hit a keyboard shortcut that, uh, I don't know how the hell that happened. The ghost in the terminal. Are you rebooting? I am. Yeah, just waiting for it to uh to go go go. When you're done rebooting, you may want to restart the logging so that the log file gets cleared. Yeah, that's good. Good show. Chat says do CTF. We're basically doing real world CTF. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, shit. I didn't reset the server. It almost ran your exploit again. Okay. Server and wait. Okay, good. We can send Mira over now. Go back. There we go. Team Star, can you compile an up-to-date Linux kernel for the PS4, please? Man, they're asking you to spend like hundreds of hours of time, huh? <laughs> that is not a trivial task. I mean, <laughs> actually, it is though. Uh, not um, when you have to deal with all those PCI Express uh, panics and shit. Oh, an up. Oh, an up-to-date kernel. Yeah, I kernel. See. Not yeah. Oh, I, I thought they just yeah. wanted to compile Linux kernel, but up to date. I mean, I think something bad happened. Kind of gave up on the PS4 Linux thing. I played a couple of times with it, but I realized I want to just buy a real computer <laughs> once parts can be shipped again. Yeah, PS4 I mean, is hardware. I don't. Good. I don't feel like like uh, spending a lot of time on that like on my own. I don't know. You're probably not interested in doing that either, are you? Uh, in the Linux stuff, it's just yeah, it's not really in my yeah. wheelhouse. Like, um, I've never really been all that into like setting up a Linux system like from from like Arch Linux or something. It's I find it more tedious than oh, anything. I think well, I think the goal here would more be to uh, like figure out what Linux, like basically porting Linux to the PS4, but with the up-to-date API. So a lot of tedious shit. Yeah. We On the other hand, we should do the custom OS thing. That would be fun. Yeah, I agree. That'd, that'd I'm currently at the stage. Yeah, I'm currently failing at stage zero, which is setting up a C compiler. Ah, uh, pretty common. Pretty common. All good. <laughs> 1BC00. 1BC292. Oh, did you panic? Yeah, we panicked. After installing the hook, right? Yeah, it's, it's when running the hook. Um, so what registers are you exactly smashing? One sec, just running a calculation. DA9 is where it crashes. Wait, what? DA9. Oh, shit. That's somewhere in the pay. Oh, man. Okay. Ooh. Is that in the payload? No, that's... Like in the original code? That's that's not in this code. It's in the trampoline or in the jump back code. One of the two. Oh, that's so annoying. I didn't catch a... Wait a minute. Hold on. This is 11 bytes. A9. This is 11 bytes, isn't it? Right? Yes. Son of a bitch. I know what the problem is. <laughs> you you only hook 10? Yeah, I only create a, a hex A size trampoline. Ah, oh, man. Such silly issues. That's... <laughs> God damn it. Ah, oh, man, sorry. It looks like we're going to be taking another couple minutes to test this, unfortunately. I do want to start looking at the, the flow hint stuff soon, though, because uh, I don't really want to run too long over four hours. 
so. And we are about at the four hour mark. Did the hook work? Not quite. Uh, I made a mistake with the trampoline. We had an off by one. Uh, I will also restart the, the UAOT. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> UAOT sets some weird Actually, it's an off by two. It's uh, 12 bytes, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, what? 90. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, it should be 11 though. bytes. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, should be XB bytes for the trampoline. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven weeks. Nine, um, ten, Eleven, yeah. I mean, seven seven weeks of uh, one stream a week, yeah. Which... Boys, please just use a calculator. I mean, we, we got it worked out. I, 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 it wasn't because we miscalculated, it was because I'd forgotten to update it. I'd forgotten that we needed to update the trampoline size. We just wanted to verify that the size was correct, that's all. But that wasn't the source of the original issue. Panic, 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 panic. That's running. Okay, we should be able to install our hook now. What crashed? Did you install the hook? Yeah. This is actually... This is actually not in the hook. This is in the kernel. What's the kernel base? Oh man, it's this problem again. I think this is a random issue that sometimes pops up. I don't think this was because of the hook itself. Because I've seen this panic before, and I, I don't think I directly addressed it. I think it just happens sometimes. So I'm going to restart again. The flow hint is not related to what we're doing, guys. We're trying to do some uh, research into uh, if the reclaim strategy is viable. We want to confirm that. Um, we will look at the hint, just not yet. But that's not related to what we're doing. You guys should add another person who will work on making Doom work on the PS4. I mean, you can install Linux and then you can run Doom. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's even Doom for PS4. I think there is so. too. I think somebody's done like a, a chocolate Doom port or something. So it's out there. No, I mean like, like a, a recent Doom. Oh, there was the Doom from Doom Eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Doom Eternal, and there you go. Doom runs on PS4. Oh, <laughs> first result on Google is a YouTube video from uh, some German site saying, "Does uh, Doom even uh, is even playable on PS4?" Probably runs pretty bad. So, uh, IABR saying just drawing to 
to stream means implementing PCIe stuff and talking to the GPU. So yeah, there there are some software rendered uh, Doom ports that use like Mesa or whatever. Um, they're not super easy to set up because a lot of that shit is like old GNU build systems and it's you gotta compile it against the tool chain. You gotta resolve all the discrepancies. Um, you can get software rendering working though. I think somebody has hardware rendering like using GPU. Yeah, it's a long ways out. There's a lot of work that has to be done on that front, unfortunately. For what exactly? For PS4 or exploit just panic or in general? Um, for doing GPU stuff, but on the PS4 on on Orbis OS. Um. Because we need the uh, static library, like we need to implement the static library for interfacing with the GPU, and we also need a sh uh, open source shader compiler. Those are the two big things that are needed to be able to do GPU accelerated rendering on Orbis OS for Homebrew. Um, if you just use the Wait. like leaked SDK, you can get stuff working on the GPU right away. Um, if you want open source legal homebrew uh, GPU accelerated rendering, though, that's a lot of work. Can you like just use stuff from Linux? Um, I'm pretty sure the like Hector Marcan and Fail Overflow and those guys wrote a driver uh, for Linux. Um, I think they really just modified some existing drivers. Like, they, they did some minor patching. Yeah, they might have modified the AMD GPU drivers. I'm not, I'm not well-versed in the GPU area to be able to give, like, an informed, like, a fully informed take of what needs to be done. I know roughly what needs to be done, not all the intricate details. Because um, if I knew all the intricate details, I would have did it. <laughs> But it's really, like, there's a lot of nuances involved at that level, and it, it gets to wizardry levels when you're there. No, I mean, but why, like, reinventing the wheel? Can't you just, like, copy and paste the uh, AMD driver for some Linux stuff, and then uh, copy and paste it to, um, to Orbis? But we don't want to run a driver on Orbis. We want to use the driver that's already there. So that's where we have to write a library to be able to interface with it. Oh, I see. And that's inherently different from what Linux is doing? Yeah. Okay. Um... I'm just rebooting the system because the exploit panicked on us. Uh, we're not having any luck at the moment. We're having extremely bad luck trying to test things. I'm telling you, this is all because I like got the second fortune cookie twice. It probably is. It's probably butterfly effect shit. You know? <laughs> Put the tinfoil hats on stream. Have you checked out the anime? Um, you should you should watch Stein Steins Gate. You did so you mentioned Steins Gate to me before. I did actually I checked out Death Note. I did. So Oh. Yeah. How's that going? Uh not too bad. Um I feel like things got a lot less interesting like halfway through, though. So. Oh. Huh, how many how many episodes did you watch? Um I th I think I'm at like 20 like 2 or something. Actually, no wait. wait no wait, 20... I finished it. Yeah, I did finish it. I couldn't remember oh. if I did or not. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I fi I I think I finished it like uh, a couple days ago or something. I was just watching it like a few episodes every night or something. Um I think Mira is loaded. Yeah, I mean I I'm not going to just in case there's people who did want to watch it who haven't in, sh in chat or whatever. Uh, after the 
you know, the one major episode, I guess, in the middle, I think I, I, it, it got a lot less interesting after that to me. Huh. Don't spoil. I've been thinking about watching it for years. Okay, we won't spoil it for you, Z. No, no worries. Okay, I, th I no, think we'll we're... Spoil it. I, I think we didn't crash. I think we're... Okay, I don't want to touch the controller too hard or I think it'll break. So... <laughs> All right. Let's try running your box. Okay, I see some hooking. I see a lot of shit happening. I don't remember it being this rapid fire before on the M buffs. Oh wow! I like I'm looking at the stream and this is insane. Yeah, it's it's like a Matrix movie or something. Yeah, that shit that ma makes much more sense. Oh boy! Because the one we've seen before is probably gonna take like an hour to run, dude. Oh, we should have probably pinned down the print to uh to like just the four bytes. This is gonna be a problem. <laughs> yeah let me ed edit the code because this is this is probably we... running like ten times as much as it did before. Like as it did before like with the previous hook or without hook at all. Oh, dude, it crashed the system entirely. Oh, wait, no, it didn't. It just crashed the video display. It came back up. Oh, my God. We're bombarding the CPU so badly that it's cutting out the video. Uh, just watch the first episode and you'll be hooked at Z. Actually, if you're talking about Death Note, I actually think the, the first episode was the worst one. I found it, like, really uninteresting. It was only after I got a couple episodes in that I, I found it, like, yeah, I've I've usually that with anime. That like the first one or like the first like two or three are like pretty boring. I was the same way with Naruto. Actually, I watched the first episode of Naruto. And I'm like, uh, uh this is not really that interesting. I don't know if I'm gonna continue. But somebody was like, this is the case with anime. You gotta watch like a few because the first episode is always like setting the scene and it's really boring. So I was like, okay. Mr. Robot, yeah, it's a good, sh uh, it's a good show. That's good. It's, it's not an anime, obviously, but it's a good show. Uh, just watch Steins Gate; you won't regret. Yeah, Steins Gate was good. Okay, WebKit crashed. Did you? Um, oh. You didn't manage to start the exploit? No, I started the exploit. It was running, but it crashed. So I don't know if that means it finished. Oh. Let's look at the log. Dude, this log is going to be... Oh, my God. Oh, it's actually not as big as I thought it would be. We never reached the end. <laughs> that's, that's what she said. Yeah, I figured you were going to go there. Uh, we never reached the end, though. It, it crashed WebKit before it reached the end. Uh, did we... Where did we even start? So, line 7875 is where we crashed. And uh, it was at your overlap phase. After the UAF trigger. Um, I am running it again. Just to see if we can make it run. But it, it's... Okay. Video display cut out again. Yeah, I'm. I I did modify the hooking thing to just print four bytes. Uh, oh, actually, that is wrong. Um, let me fix that up as well. Mh data. Do you remember the, what the offset was? Uh. Of, was it like OX twenty eight or something? Well, for data, we were we were just dereferencing the MH data pointer. Oh right, so yeah. that, 
so that it was already correct. I'm going to try running this one more time, just to see if it does anything different. <clears throat> Did you watch Assassin Pride or Corpse Party? I I haven't even heard of those, so no. I'm guessing those since we're, we were talking about animes, I'm guessing that's an anime. I don't know, but no, I haven't seen them. Okay, we got f no. Never mind. <sighs> I was about to say we got further than we did before, but then we crashed to the exact same spot. It just took a second to do it. <laughs> okay, so much for that. Okay, so I did modify the hooking thing to only print four bytes. Okay. Um, I guess it boils down on what we want to do. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to... Let me see if I can shut down the console yeah. normally. So I can restart it. I, I have a feeling I won't be able to. I have a feeling this unbuff shit's gonna fuck the shutdown process. <sighs> yes, an anime watch course party, but make sure you have finished your food. So we'll run your modified hook payload. Um. After that, though, I, I want to look at the hint, because I, I want to wrap yeah. this up probably soon. It sounds, sounds good. Alright, so... Can we talk about the last scene of Avatar? Which Avatar? Why would you... Why would you want to talk about the last scene of anything? <laughs> I don't know which avatar they're talking about. I don't know if they're talking about the like last airbender or whatever, or if they're talking about the you know the avatar movie by James Cameron or whatever. Probably the anime. Didn't didn't they want to like do a second movie? They did, or but did the they? yeah, they did, but the story was really bad. So they didn't. <laughs> Dude, that, that Avatar movie was like, everyone was amazed at how good it looked at the time, but outside of how good it looked, it had nothing. The story was so bad. Like the second one, or? Uh, no, like just the Avatar movie, like, that's why I don't think they ever did a second one, was because there was just like not enough interest in it. What do you mean? The, the movie was great. Oh, it's scheduled for 2022. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, the PS4s are... Oh, shit, it is. Okay. Wow. I thought I thought it was canned. <laughs> That's and a long... Like, uh... The third one is... That's a long drift in between. The third, one is... the third one is scheduled for 2024. Dude, the first one launched in, like, what was it, like, 2012 or something? It was a 20, long time ago. Uh, nine. 2009. Wow, that's a long... 2009. That's a long uh, period in between. <clears throat> so apparently they did finish like recording Avatar 2 in 2020. Didn't restart the server, but that's okay because I had the alert there to save me. Boy, I thought the Avatar movie was great. I you liked really it? Enjoyed it. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I will say I enjoyed it at the time, but when I go back and look at the story, this I I feel like the story could have been done a lot better. Oh my god, you're joking, dude! <laughs> the, Is it panic? Five point oh five exploit crashed again. We've done entire streams where it never crashed once. It's happened to us like three times now, dude. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, wow.
It's not. Do you want to look at the the buck maybe? Otherwise, I feel like we're not going to be able to do that today. Yeah, we can do that and then uh, we'll run the test at the end maybe mm. or something. Okay. Um where is it? <laughs> there we go. I will find it. Actually, shit, I have it up, right? Is this it? No, that was something else. It had the same favicon, so I got Okay, um, this was what uh, Flo sent. Twitter. So he was saying to use this in conjunction with the other issue. Um, so what I'm what I'm assuming <clears throat> he's getting us to look as the old code, like what's redded, redded out. Um, so Slayer Scovy said that the new one might potentially work too. Yeah, he said something about it not mattering or something if the patch was there. Um, <clears throat> so this is IP6 get prev header. Get pointer to the previous header followed by the header currently process wait what get pointer to the previous header followed by the am i dumb that's nonsensical right get get the pointer <laughs> get pointer yeah, to the I'm previous sure header followed by the header mean. currently process what the fuck does that mean I don't know what that means, dude. Okay. Whatever. It sounds like they're adjacent in, in, in memory, maybe? It's like it's saying, get the previous header followed by this header. Which, okay. <laughs> the previous one following. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what it's saying. Maybe it's just like t telling twice that the previous one is followed by the current one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> Um, so it's so it used to take the IP6 which was M2D which this basically gets the data uh, I think it returns the MH data pointer of the mbuff and casts it to the second argument so it casts it to an IP6 header um and then it gets the next header from that. The length is set to the size of the header structure. IP6E, which is a extended header, is taken from M2D plus len, which should be fine. That should still be all good. And then in the case of an IP proto fragment, it adds the fragment header to the length of age it takes. Hmm. This case is a bit interesting. And the default case, actually. Because these uh these lengths I think should be controlled by the user. No, wait. No, they're in the extended header. I don't think they would be actually. Okay, never mind that, I guess. And then it I think the interesting bit here is that in the new one it copies the data, while with the old one it just points to it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to work out what the point of interest here is and what you can take advantage of. So far, this one looks like somewhat reasonable. I don't really see how you could take advantage of it because it's using like everything is in the header or the extended header which you will not co uh control with a double f What does oh, the wait. mtot do? Um, I'm I'm pretty sure it's that a macro is yeah that takes the uh, 
MH data pointer and then it casts it to whatever you pass the second argument, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It takes M Wait, data and it casts it. The data pointer we control, like we control the data at the data pointer. Uh no, we don't. Because that's in the header. We don't have arbitrary control of the header. We can overlap. No, headers. we don't control the we don't control the pointer, but we control whatever this points to. Oh, we control the data at that. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, okay. I was thinking so we didn't it control. Takes... What? So in case it takes an IPv6, like it dereferences IPv6e, which is extended header from the data buff, actually. Oh, yeah. Why does it do that? That's so strange. But yeah, you're right. We do con entirely control that content because we control the data. Which means we control the full IPv6 extension struct. And then this path, it returns, yeah. and then it returns the IP um, IP six e dot next. So there's there's an info leak potential there because if you uh, use a freed mbuff and overlap another mbuff, you can get something leaked potentially through the next one, uh, maybe. That's a stretch. Oh, wait, then um, I'm looking at the green one. So what it returns is the offset of the IP6E, IP6E next. Or the address? Uh, yeah, that's really, yeah, it returns the address because it used to return a char star. Yeah, so it's the full address. So that, that wouldn't be an info leak because that's intended behavior, but um, I mean, regardless, this is interesting because it means we can get arbitrary control over an extended header. And with that, this is where I think you could potentially induce a heap overflow is because the header has length pointers, right? So if we can smash the length to whatever we want, then we can get a misalignment or rather, like a, an overflow in the mbuff zone, which can allow us to corrupt an adjacent mbuff to hit like that m free uh, function pointer, basically. So I, I see why this is so interesting now. I, I looked at it a little bit when Flo posted it, and I didn't really see what he was going for, but yeah, this is this is what we needed essentially. This is what we were trying to get with the. Um, you're trying to get around with the reallocation or the page reclaiming strategy, basically, is to be able to get control over an extended header or header in general. When is that going to be called, though? Uh, this IP6 get prev header? Yeah. Um, it's called in raw IP6. Uh, what is this function? Oh, it's called an RIP6 input. Um, although I don't think we have that. Maybe in frag 6? Frag 6 input? Do we have that on? Yes, I think we do, right? Maybe we might have frag six input. Okay, but now I see what's why Slayer's go. We said that it doesn't matter if it's patched or not, because the patch essentially does the same thing. It basically instead of taking the um, a pointer right there, it just copies everything to a local buffer, but then it does the exact same thing. Which is dereferencing um, the next dereferencing from user control data, yeah, yeah. So and what's next? Next is length. I mean, it looks like it does essentially the same thing. 
yeah, what's just, the difference just slightly being that it copies it first. Yeah, uh, M Zizo, I I know about the Slears Govi pock. You, you don't have to keep linking it. I've been sent it like probably fifteen times. Um, from what I've heard, it's not super stable. Somebody came in earlier and said it it has like a one in twenty success rate. So I'm, I'm probably gonna try to hit this issue with my own implementation. Um, Sirs Gobi might have a working strat. Like he might find a way to stabilize his POC to make it work better, which would be awesome if he did. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to try to do my own implementation as at least a fallback. So yeah, maybe I'll look at his right. POC for you know to see how certain things work. But I'm probably going to do our own exploit. Yeah. Do you want to call it today, or do you want to look at the Slayer's Govi, how he, like, calls into that? Um, I don't think we'll do that on this stream. Um, the PS4 is rebooted, though, so we can try, uh, the, the payload. Uh, and we'll, we'll kind of okay. probably end off on that, or that'll be the last thing we do before. I say a few things about, uh, the streams going forward, so... Uh, yeah, sorry for spamming. I thought you didn't know about it. Yeah, all good, dude. Um, yeah, it's just with the streams, we, we kind of want to... It's like Z said, we kind of want to, you know, go through them and, and try to exploit it, so... We don't just want to take his pocket and try to run it or something. Because that wouldn't be too fun. Okay, so Mira is ran. Now we can make from the payload. Okay, payload should be installed. Um, yep, it's installed. And then we'll rerun the server. I think my wrist is starting to get carpal tunnel or something. It really hurts when I bend it. I don't know why. I guess that's something I'll have to fix uh, at some point. It's done this before. It's like locked up. I don't think it's carpal tunnel, but maybe it's like on the way to that. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So we're running your POC. Uh, page was a lot faster loading. Actually, wait. Is the hook installed? I'm not seeing any. Oh, I saw some stuff up above. Okay. Yeah, I think there is. Uh, they can stop him from hacking their software publicly, but he'll they'll never be able to take that disc track off the web. Oh, the yeah, the the GeoHot disc track. I haven't listened to that in years, but yeah, that was a pretty pretty good meme. But yeah, four he's... five four four. Zero, I think their their content looks about right. Maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. Oh, it's doing the DNA thing again. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, that is like such a weird like pattern. I love it. It's so cool. Like how it's just doing that out of nowhere. We're not getting a lot of freeing M buffs now. No, we're not. Um it's strange. Which is weird, because, huh? Is that COVID DNA? We should submit this sample to. Uh, speaking of GeoHots, we should submit this sample to his Python repository so we can uh, reverse engineer COVID nineteen. <laughs> Dude, I I think that repo's been dead since. What was it? 
I wonder if I can find it. Was this it? Yeah, this was it. 11 months ago. Oh, there was a, a change to the README two months ago. Oh, wow. Big, big, big progress. <laughs> oh, I love that repository, dude. All right, we reached the end. What does it do, though? Oh, what that that repo? Um, I don't think it. Really, yeah. I don't think it really does anything. <laughs> I think it's just. I I don't know what it is. Honestly, it's like Python scripts and. Are we have again the the three seven one zero zero six. Yeah, we get thing. that. We get that quite a lot. Um. So let's just look at which makes me wonder whether that is actually some some interesting behavior because i think that did start when we added the proper uh page out thing no bro it's ai stuff it totally does something um yeah i'm not seeing like a lot of them buff free okay here's like some when you were doing your Big routine. Although the data is all the same, it's all this ED zero D thing. I don't know. It's and it's all on CPU one. Oh, are you looking at the K log? Oh, yeah, I am down there. Dude, what? It's all the same uh, data. Oh, I think the system might have crashed. Yeah, it did. I think. Um. Yeah, I'm not really seeing the data that I'd expect to see there. It's all this ED0D1B1C thing. I don't know what that's from. And it's all on CPU 1, which is not the browser. So, I don't know. Strange. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it seems the reclaim strategy might not, like... I mean... It's hard to tell. I am am kind of... It's hard to tell because this um, 3710006, that does look kind of interesting. Does this have any other? No, it doesn't. The other thing that's worth noting, though, is we are forcefully clearing all of the IDs, which in realistic situations probably is not feasible. So. True. Um, but so, but this does look like some other page like gets allocated. I don't know how realistic it is to to trigger that thing like without the hook. But yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. Although how maybe data. we maybe we what's sorry? Yeah, maybe we do want to switch to the other strategy because um... I, I think we will. Um, I just I do find it's like super weird though that we're not getting the data we expected from the mbuff prints, um, and that they're all on CPU zero and one. Like we should be getting shit on CPU seven, and we're not. So that's really strange. So the thing is, since uh, we're hooking an inline function. That might not be where we um where uh it might be taking a different branch, you think? Correct? No, but I'm wondering where the I remember having labeled some variables which are not labeled right now, so I wonder if we hooked the wrong thing. No way, it's it's the M pull up in my code. Yeah. I think the hook location should be correct. What if, if there's different like path that this gets uh, triggered? This should be M. For example, we could straight up hook MB3 extended or UMA Z free. We cannot hook UMA Z free. That's called like a billion <laughs> times a second. The system will die. 
Um, we can add a filter though, because we can check for zone buff. Mm, we could. Hooking that function is dangerous though too, because where it's called so often, it's possible it gets called while we're writing the hook there, which would be very bad. But it's something I could try maybe, just like. Yeah, you need to like write the trampoline like the last thing you do. Like first the actual everything else and then like the trampoline. Yeah. But yeah. All right. I think that's the last test uh, we're going to run. Um, overall, uh, I think it's probably safe to say that since, like, especially since we tried force clearing all the caches, which it, reality might not even work. Um, but even then, like, we, we're not really getting the behavior we're expecting. I think the reclaiming just might not work on PS4 because of the way they do the pinning. Um, it's there is a possibility it might work, but uh, I don't know. I feel like after all the testing I mean, we did, we would have we, seen something more promising if it was. We do crash every time, though. Like, if you exit the browser now, it crashes, right? Oh, I like didn't even have panics. to exit the browser. Um, it, it panicked regardless, but it, it is... Oh, does it do that any every time? Yeah. Well, then it does work. Well, it does that um, that SB drop panic, which you get regardless. Like it, it's not the panic you would expect. It's an assertion failure. You see, panic SB drop. This is not a like normal memory corruption panic. This is an assertion failure. Yeah, because we're um, faking the pointer potentially. No, if we if like we were faking address, the pointer, so it would be a memory corruption crash, not a assertion like that this All assertion right, I happens wanna, i want to know that. this assertion happens i want to know i want to know what that sb thing is that might be mbuff code though but this happened like you can trigger the double free we have without doing any heave spraying and this panic will happen so it's 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 not a promise or crash All right i will do we have the SB drop in the in the source code? Uh, you might be able to find it somewhere. The the string should be there somewhere. But... Uh, SB drop. So once Alex emulator Good. works and we can just single step through everything and just read any memory CPU values we want by how much will that cut the exploit dev time? Oh, it it would accelerate it a lot, but um, I don't think. Orbital will reach that point anytime soon. So it is, in fact, in uh, in sock buff. I'm look. I'm pretty sure this is okay. Can we do one final test? Uh, yeah, we can. Basically, if you uncomment the triggers, then it shouldn't panic until you close the browser, potentially. Uncomment the triggers? Wait. Yeah, like, let me see. We have the exploit. It's userland.js, right? Uh, that's what we're running, yeah. So basically, if we input an alert... Uh, alert pre trigger. Post trigger one. Post trigger two. All right, which means if everything works. Like basically, what I'm hoping to see is the the packet one, which is again the the three something that we observed. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, actually, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm trying to figure like. Uh. 
uh, follow your thought process. Mm. Well, the idea is that we reach here, and technically this is supposed to be the the trigger. So getting here is fine, but it will panic either here or here. Oh, it, it always panics after the re we reach the end. Either if you leave it in the browser for a, co a couple minutes, or if you exit True. the browser. It never panics before then. Huh. Yeah, that's why I think it's not really a, a promising crash, because it's it's always on the cleanup routines when the browser is, is running cleanup, which the corruption is there regardless of if you do any heap grooming or not. It's just going to... It's always going to do that because something gets smashed that causes an assertion to fail, but it's not in the like mbuff interesting stuff. Could be like on socket close. Yeah, it might it might be. Anyways, because Slayer Scovy does close the socket on his previous pog. Okay, well. Yeah, I think overall, yeah, like this is probably. What were we gonna say, sir? Yeah. This is probably. Uh, I think yeah, it's probably more more promising going the other strategy anyway for this one. Yeah. Um, in terms of saying definitively if reclaiming worked, I did want to try to do that this stream. Try to say if like reclaiming is that as a strategy. Uh, with all the testing, like bad luck we had we didn't get as far as i kind of wanted to on that um it might be something that i'll revisit but it, i don't think it's something that i'm gonna put too much more time into um and so one thing i will say about future streams um so previously how we've been doing it is we've been doing like one stream a week on thursdays usually uh like pre-scheduled um for the next week or so i'm gonna be doing more impromptu streams i'm gonna be doing streams that like probably Maybe not during the weekend, but during the weekdays, just maybe at like 7 or 8 o'clock my time uh, Eastern, I'll just throw on the stream uh, and work on some stuff. Um, so it won't be like as structured, I guess, with the, you know, with the scheduling. But I, I kind of want to hammer this out and see like if we can go as far as we can go within the next week. Because uh, I do have some stuff that I need to like refocus on in the near future. and. Uh, these streams take up a lot of time. Like just the streams themselves, this one's going to be almost five hours. And then that's not including some of the stuff I was doing yesterday to get the hook stuff working. So, I mean, yeah, they are uh, eating a lot of time. So, I'm going to try to hammer uh, a lot of it out over the next like week and and just you know that's as far as we go, kind of. Um, but it, it will mean that the streams won't be scheduled. Uh, good job only keeping this to four hours, though. <laughs> yeah, we we went a little bit longer than. Uh, I thought we would go today, but that was just the nature of the tests being so annoying to run. Um, for those streams, Team Star, uh, if you're around and want to tune in, uh, I'll I'll probably sit in the Discord if you if you did want to join in. Um, uh, if you're not around though, that that's yeah, fine. I I will probably not be able to make it because of the time. Yeah, I figure that's probably the case. Um, but if you're around though and want to hop in, like you're you're fully welcome to. Um, but yeah, I think we will be stopping the uh, scheduled streams going forward, and we'll just do them impromptu. <laughs> no, this is a recording. We just type the same things in chat as a meme. Yeah, this is actually recorded. Get the tinfoil hats on. There actually is no streams. It's all set up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, going forward, we'll be doing the uh, impromptu streams. I will announce them on like Twitter and, and in the Discord in the Day Zero Discord. Uh, if you're not already there, go ahead and hop in. Um, but yeah, they just won't be like known, you know, uh, days in advance or anything. It'll it'll be known day of. When is the next stream happening? I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not going to be announcing the streams days ahead of time. They're I'm just going to announce them when I do them, uh, kind of thing. Um, and I'll work a little bit off stream and on stream as well. So. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe Slears Gobi will release something within the next couple days. It wouldn't surprise me too heavily. Um, but even if he does, I will still work through stuff because uh, 
I'd like to try to get my own implementation going. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can get that far. All right. Um, do we have any raid target Z uh, to send off to? I think you probably have some in mind. Uh, okay. So Soda Wave Live, you mentioned uh, play, playing some bad connect games. All right. Um, yeah, so we're going to be raiding someone. They're, they're not doing, like, exploit stuff. Uh, they're doing more game-oriented stuff, as I understand it. Um, but, yeah, uh, we're going to raid you guys off to a personal friend of Z's. Uh, he wants to give him some attention. So if you're interested in some some gaming-related content uh, and interested in showing somebody some love, we'll, we'll throw you over to him. Um, but, yeah, we're going we're gonna to cut today's stream now. Um, thanks to everyone who tuned in. Uh, once again, follow us on Twitter. Check out uh, our Discord, and we will see you guys uh, in the next stream, whenever that is.